Good evening. Welcome into Marvin L. Boring Gymnasium, where tonight William Blunt takes on Farragut in the first district game of the season. This is the Heartland Roofing pregame show, brought to you, of course, by Heartland Roofing, A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau, and a five-star five rating on Google. Be sure to give Nate a call. It gives free estimates and free inspections as well. So tonight's contest, as I said, would be a first district game for both the boys' girls' teams here as the Farragut Admirals from over in West Knoxville come across town to take on the governors and lady governors tonight. William Blunt, the lady governors in this contest, coming off a couple of losses as they lost to Heritage last Friday night. You saw that game right here on Gov Nation Network and, of course, listened on AM 1470, um, WBCR Voice of Champions. And then Tuesday night, both teams traveled up to Campbell County in the return game for it. And the girls took it again on the chin up there at Campbell County as they uh, ended up on the wrong end of that score as well. As um, So Campbell County got the sweep over the Lady Governors this season in that. The boys contest, William Blunt picked up wins over Heritage and as well as uh, as well as Campbell County on Tuesday night. So 20 point win for the boys. Been joined by Rob Lotz now as Scott Cup is in New York. It looks like he's live. <laughs> I don't know if live he's live. Live from Times Square. He may have recorded it. He probably recorded, but yeah, uh, he's doing his, uh, putting his chapstick on. But yeah, it's a uh, district opener stand. Yeah, and, I mentioned uh, that. And so, Robbie, it's a big game for both both teams. You know, really, girls trying to get back on the winning ways is they've not, the last two games have been beaten pretty soundly, not really competitive. So they'll be trying to get back into that. And of course, the boys contest should be a good one tonight. Yeah, well, and, and, and I keep thinking that the girls have just, that, that they've turned the corner this year and then they reverted a little bit back to what we'd seen the last couple. But well, I will remind you, Robbie, they lost to 11 and one heritage team and a 10 and, and a 10 one, one Campbell, Campbell County. County. Right, I understand. Um, but it was the way that they lost, yeah. Stan. I would, thought we would have been within 10 points of both of those. It just didn't turn out to be that way. It wasn't our night uh, last two games. But um, it's now these games really matter. Uh, yeah. So, you know, that was kind of like the preseason part. Uh, like we said, there's three parts of the season. Now these these games right here get you set up for the district tournament seating. Certainly, um, Robbie. And, of course, you know, you want to hold serve on your home courts. And this, you know, only you only have five home district games. That's one of the downfalls of the smaller region or smaller districts, Robbie. You only play, you only got 10, 10 games total in the district. And so five of them are at home, five of them are on the road. You got to hold serve uh, at home. Yeah, yeah. And you definitely, like you say, top two in the region or district advance automatically to the region. The top four, uh, the, the three and the four will have to play their way in. in right. So it uh, looks like we're just about set. This is the Heartland Roofing pregame report from Marvin L. Boring Gymnasium, A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau and five-star rating on Google. Give Nate a call at 865-323-5933. We're going to send it down to Tyler. I believe he's going to have the national anthem. At this time, please rise and gentlemen.
All right, we're back here, and we're just about set for the starting lineups. They're brought to you by the Lawn Butler. Lawn Butler of Knoxville, the one-stop shop for all your landscaping needs. Give them a call, 865-777-1755. Farragut, I believe, Stan comes in 6-5, and five, another team that's played a really tough schedule. Yeah. There's a familiar face. Number one, J.C. Newbert, the transfer from Heritage. Number 11, Maya Johnston. Number 12, Reagan Sheridan. Number 22, K.J. McNeely. I believe she's their top player. And yes, 23. just a sophomore, too. Josh. 24, 24, I think. 24. Carly Vining. All right. Lady Govs. Number 24, Allie Everett. Freshman playing the five. Number 11, the sophomore, Taylor Rule. Number three, junior, shooter, sharpshooter, Charlie Scarlett. Number 20, also a junior, Savannah Darnell. And the captain, Chloe Russell. Christmas theme tonight, Stan, as it's the last game before Christmas, well, Christmas break really started, I guess. For, for high school kids, Tuesday night, or Tuesday, I guess, for the kids that didn't have to take exams. Right, so for everybody got, else, though, elementary, we have to work all week, so. <laughs> but yeah, Reno Hall will be your head ref tonight. Seen Reno in a while. Good to see him again. One of the better officials in this area. Yes, he is. Very experienced. The tip will be brought to you by Anywhere Movers. Give Alvin Jeanette a call, 865-235-4108. It'll be between McNeely, who's plays for Farragut in all black, William Blunt's Everett in all white, taken by Farragut, and they got a quick start. Layup by, by uh, Duber. The Heritage transferred. It's two to nothing, Robbie. And here comes full court press as Rule gets it across for William Blunt. Little helter skelter for William Blunt. Now they settle down and get it to Scarlett. Rule says set it up here. So they're going to play straight man. They're going to press and then play straight man, Robbie. That's what they did last year. As you said, if Darnell gets to the rack, lay it up and in. Good job by Savannah. Yeah, with the contact too. That's good to see that she finished. They rack to play it up tempo, does it, Farragut? And we're going to blocking foul on the baseline. I believe that'll go against Russell. She just a little late. First foul of the game will go against Chloe. Can't afford her to get in foul trouble, so she'll have to play smart. These black jerseys with blue numbers, not, I think it's number 12, Sheridan. Yeah, I'm glad we're not super high up, guys, yeah. if she misses the first free throw, because that'd be hard to see. Yeah, Reagan Sheridan. Because I'm once again rolling in on two wheels here, so I miss most, most of the pregame. I was here for the starting lineups. Second toss is good by Sheridan, so Fair gets back up three to two. Ball's deflected in the rear, or deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with William Blunt, though. Robbie, you talked about KJ McNeely, just a sophomore. Yeah. Very good I player. Think she was double digit scorer last yeah. year as a freshman. She was. She was their best. Uh, you really don't want to pick your ball up there. And right there's a turnover, right there. then Rule stop slaps it back out of bounds, so. Yeah, picked it up in a, probably not the best place to pick up her dribble, and it did result in the turnover. So Farragut will have it side front court. Oh, nice move by McNeely, but can't hit the layup. And then a travel called. I thought she walked on the first one. I thought it was a pretty good move, but regardless. Either way. It's yeah. ruled about can't handle it, but she does. Shreds through the press. Going down to Darnell. Darnell hits back to Rule, lay it up, misses everything, but rebound by Everett. She gets it out to, to uh, Chloe. Chloe misses the shot, no good. Rebound by Dubert for Farragut. Layup, no good. Tipped around, rebound by Scarlett. So going back the other way, I almost said Dubert for Heritage, Robbie, because <laughs> she is the Heritage transfer. Is she a junior or sophomore? She's a junior. She played two years at Heritage. Okay. As Darnell 
It's going to get to the rack Good again check. and draw the, the contact this time. Didn't get the shot, but got the contact. She'll get to shoot twice. That's going to be on Maya Johnson, her first. Team first. As I look down in the corner, Robbie, and I see the legend. Donald Dodgen. Donald Dodgen getting ready to settle and into his And another legend seat. right beside him, Jack Tate. Jack Tate, right beside Jack Tate. Darnell hits the first toss. Yeah, me and uh, Coach Young were talking to Jack earlier. 17 Division I signees, I believe, on this Farragut baseball team this year. Yeah, it was ridiculous. I saw it. And they got a transfer in that's throwing 94 committed to Mississippi State. The other. And then they've got also, you said D Division One. they've got a lot of JUCO kids also as well. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Well, I just mean signees. Okay. Uh, they're all well, what's new? It's it's like a puppy mill out there for D1 talent. Savannah's got all, uh, made, well, Savannah made both. So, so 4 3 four. your score. And there's McNeely from the corner, drains it for a three pointer. And that's something William Blunt's going to have to do if they want to stay in this game. They're going to have to hit from behind the arc. Really struggled last home game. Well, McNeely's going to be a signee someday, too. She's just a sophomore. As Savannah gets to the rack. No good, but, but Allie sure. Everett with the rebound kicks it out for the three. That's no good. Russell with the rebound. So Blunt going to work on the offensive boards. Allie's got two offensive boards. Needs to Rule. attack. Kicks it over to Scarlett instead. Back to Darnell. Savannah shot the ball really well Tuesday night. She was really probably there's a the, cut. They had her the right spot. And there goes Russell to lay. They're going to get an a offensive foul this time on Chloe. It's two. And a quick two. She'll be so, out. She'll have to come out. Yeah, they're going to bring in Hicks, it looks like. Tonight they'll be out without the service of Caitlin Husband. I believe she's on some volleyball thing she is. in Florida. She is. Um, so I, good luck to her down there. They'll miss her tonight. Yep. Especially the size. And now you see two early fouls for Chloe. We'll see how. Uh, I think uh, somebody else is out too. Are they easy kid. Yeah, easy. Out sick. yeah, that's what I thought. So very short bench for Jason Callenberg tonight. Hicks and then three other ones. Oh, she settled there. I don't know why. She could have got a layup. And McNeely gets the rebound, though, comes flying in. Toss, no good. Or shot up, no good. Rebound by Everett. Here's a good look. And wide open is short. Charlize Short, as you said. First quarter three pointers will be brought to you by Murphy Bobcat, your extra effort excavator. Good move. McNeely to the rack, lay it up and lay it in. Otto could have been an and one. She was strong with the ball, though, when she finished. Hicks. Excuse me. Yeah, Hicks had it. Gives it back to Darnell. Darnell, nice, there nice. we go. Look to Everett, lay it up and lay it in. Farragut was looking for another charge there, but I think. Savannah did a good job of, not of avoiding it, yeah. And she did a really good job drawing defenders toward her as well. It left Allie Everett wide open underneath. Eight to six, your score midway through the first period. McNeely. Oh, there's a steal by Savannah. She tried to throw it over Savannah. She stole it. Darnell's going to thought and blow right by McNeely. Good defense. Instead, she gets in the lane, almost loses it, gives it back out to Hicks. Someone go help her. Hicks gives it to Rule back up. They're going to reset it at the top. Scarlett gives it over to Everett. Inside to Rule. Rule spins. Oh, she got hit. Left it a little short. Then a walk call. So that'll end up being a turnover. That might as have been a makeup call because I didn't see the travel. Was that on Vining? I think that rebounded. 24 Vining, yeah. yeah she got the She's coming out. As checking in will be Corum. A freshman, no sophomore, excuse me, Anna Corum is coming in. I'm assuming, wasn't there a Corum that played a receiver out there a few years ago that's played a fair against sure Travis Kelsey? I'm not sure if they, uh, possibly, yes. I don't know if that was, there was one that was trend. Hicks catches it on the long pass, can't do anything with it, turns it over. And we'll go the other way. Then. Scarlett with a nice steal, gives to Darnell. 
Back out. Oh. It's all right. Secondary break was not there, so we're reset. We have wanted to reset it here. They only trail by two late here in the first period. Hicks kicks it out to Darnell for a wide open three. Short that one's right. off and goes out of bounds. Eight to six, your score. Jason Farragut under the direction of Jason Mayfield. Been there quite a little bit, a long time. Yeah, two years ago, state runner up. Yeah. They played Bearden five times that year, Robbie. As McNeely gets her rebound and lays it back yeah, in. She's shooting, missing, and getting her own board. She's got seven, probably with three boards. And Miss Savannah over there on the right side. There's Savannah the is. Oh, had to gets, get fouled. Don't yeah. call it. I believe that's going to be on. Probably 23, but we'll see. Yep. Anderson. Hannah Hender Anderson, her first team second. So both teams pretty clean, only two fouls. Through about six minutes. First one's good. So Robbie, going back to two years ago, state runner up. Fair get lost to Bearden five times yeah, that year. And the last and one was the closest yeah. one. But that would be very frustrating, wouldn't it? Yeah. And, and your one arch, team you can't get past, and they're seven miles away from yeah, you. Yeah, that's what I was getting ready to say, your arch rival. You know, if it was another team in the district, maybe if they were losing to Heritage or something. But when you lose to the, trick, the team that's just right down the road, just get on Kingston Pike and go east a little ways. That just tells you how tough this district is year in and year out. Minute 26 to go. William Blunt trails by two. There. McNeely with the three ball, air ball. Rebound on the backside by Hicks. She gets it up to Scarlett. William Blunt could run here. They've got numbers, bad pass, but Rule was able to run it down. Back out to Scarlett. Scarlett with the oh, three. Oh, there it is. We'll take a Murphy Bobcat. Bank is still open here at 613. As Scarlett had to rush it and it banked in, doesn't matter. Counts all the same. As we're under a minute to go. Blunt has the lead. Shot from the elbow, no good. That time by Anderson. William Blunt gets it. They can attack, hold for attack, one if attack, they want. Attack her. She's got her foot out there. She can attack her front foot right there. Well, they have the arrow. So if they want, they can hold it for one. They're not going to do that. They're going to, Darnell's going to get a shot mm. off. No good. Rebound by Newbert. There'll be four shots before she the end of the quarter. She gets to McNeely. Stand. McNeely drains the three. Ten first quarter points of their 13. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, ten yeah. of their 13. And remember, she's just a sophomore. <laughs> yeah. Problem is, Dan, she's not the best sophomore in the district. The girl Beard. Yeah. It's unbelievable. As Darnell gets in there, a lot of contact, didn't get called. The quarter comes to a close. And Farragut wins the quarter 13 to 11, but Blunt stays close. We've got one in the books, and we'll take a short timeout here on Gov Nation Network and Voice of Champions. Second half action here at William Blunt High School. Blunt will get the ball to start it, only trailing by two, but there's a turnover, a steal by Newbert. Lay it up, lay it in. 
Newbert read it like a book. One of the easiest layups she'll have tonight. She goes up William Blunt. Actually, that's... Yeah, yeah he's got to fix it. Or now he got it. Yeah, 15 to 11, your score. Hicks. Kicks it back out to Rule. Rule over to Sweat, who has checked in now. Yeah, she's going to have to step it up. She's going to be playing quite a few minutes tonight, I would assume. Yeah, really not that deep of a bench tonight, as we mentioned. Husband not available. Kid not available. As Hicks kicks it back out. Yeah, not a good pass. As, and there's a foul. A great, a, Uber. Uber picks up the foul. As I thought the pass was not clean enough where Scarlett could get it, but it actually helped her get her momentum going towards the basket. Drawing the foul, the first of the game on J.C., and the first of the second quarter. First free throw is no good off the front of the rim. As Darnell's gonna check in, she'll check in for Hicks. As Chloe Russell still sitting on the bench with two fouls. Second one, no good as well, over two from the line. So Blunt needs all those if they get tonight. If they wanna pull the upset. Neely's runner, no good, but rebound on the backside there by number 20, Curry. And Curry puts it back in, and then there's a backcourt violation. That's because the first pass was a bad one, and Savannah had to save it best she could. Right now, we're in, right now, if Farragut scores, you might, might need to bring Chloe back in or Try to get some type yeah, of I think out. so, Robbie. You know, there's a long three ball by Newbert. No good. They're going to get McNeely over the back. Her first, team second of the second quarter. That's a deep three by Newbert. Yeah, it was, Robbie. It was way out there on the lettering, it looked like, for the Bill Wallace court. Hicks gets a pick, a screen from Sweat, back to Sweat. Sweat had the shot. Instead throws it in the oh, corner to Scarlett. Scarlett, three ball, ah, good. There we go. Nice. Much needed. That's a Bowen door service, making your best first impression. I'm not sure how Sweat found her. Uh, a lot of defenders in the way, just able to scoop it under them. So Farragut comes back and scores. 19-14 is your score. It is incorrect on the screen. As Richard will get that fixed. As Darnell gets to the rack. No shot, but no good. But Sweat was there to clean up. But a jump ball will go to Farragut on the alternate possession. Mullins is set to check in here for Farragut. She'll check in for number 12. That is uh, Sheridan. So the scoreboard's correct now with 5.25 to go. As shot runner no good by Newbert. Actually, that was not Newbert. That was Mullins, I believe. So, Robbie, these numbers, it's really hard to see. Yeah. Mullins and Mullins and Newbert both kind of look alike and both right. have ponytails, so. Long ponytails, I should say. They kind of run the same, yeah. too. Mullins catches it to McNeely. That's to Newbert, back to McNeely. Missed it. Shot no good, looked like maybe over the back. Not gonna be by called Curry. Instead, they'll say it's poked out by Curry and she'll check out. Checking back in is number 24, Vining, or Vining. Uh, good minutes for Curry though. Yeah. As the scoreboard, you see the clock's not operating. The score is correct on your screen. It's just the clocks, there it goes. They're trying to get it that worked on. It keeps freezing up, I think, so we'll see here. Good look. Here comes a good look by Scarlett. Oh. No good, and a good box out. That's a hold on 24. Yep. By Vining, they are gonna get Vining on a box out, on a hold right there. She did a good box out, but she held her too long. You can't wrap around her. Hey, did they close it on Alley? Oh my. No, 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 no. No, it wasn't called on Alley. Oh, okay. 
I think the referee was confused. He just ran the wrong way. Yeah, he just ran the wrong way. And here's the thing that made it, Robbie. They both were number 24, 24 and that's yeah. what confused everybody. Okay, so Viney yeah. got the foul. Yarnell and Hicks check in here for the Lady Govs. Three team fouls now for Fair. If we can continue to go, that might have been a travel. Yeah, a little bit of travel on Hicks. She shuffled him and she caught it. I say with Chloe on the bench, you'd like to get get Fair get get to the foul line here. Be a way to get some points. So 4-10 to go in the half. As there's a steal by Hicks. She can give it up. Actually, good move, but no good. Gets her own rebound. Good work, Eliza. Hands it off to Scarlett. Scarlett back to Hicks at the elbow. Kicks it out to Darnell. Darnell wants to penetrate. Instead gives it to Scarlett. Hands it back to Hicks. Quick, quick. Blunt is trying to run that little weave and trying to find a crack somewhere in the top. There's a there it is. Shot. And right there, Darnell, Ooh, shot no ball, good. Man. Rebound. Gotta stop the ball. A fair get. McNeely does not get stopped, but misses the runner and the freshman Yarnell for William Blunt rebounds it. So Blunt may have dodged one right there, Robbie, as McNeely missed the little six foot floater in front of the rim. Yeah, but so did, so did Savannah, so it kind of evened out. Both those girls usually make those shots. Darnell, going once up. again, yeah, is going to get up. up and get a two-shot foul coming here. I think this is Mullins. It is Mullins. Her first, team fourth, but it was in the act of shooting. Savannah Darnell, four for four from the line, will go back. She has a her and Savannah, her and Charlize both have six points. And Chloe's got the other one. First one's good. 304 remaining here in this first half as uh, the clock is still wrong here um, on Gov Nation. Score now 1915 on the first made free throw. 304 actually left to go. Two for two from the line is Darnell. And Coach Kallenberg is going to take a timeout. This timeout is going to be brought to you by South Park Storage and Penske Truck Reynolds. At the end of William Blood Drive at 411 South, we'll take a 30 second break. Back at William Blunt High School after the timeout. Again, scores 19-16 in favor zone. of Farragut. William Blunt comes out in the zone here. And foul's going to be picked up by Hicks real quick on the zone. 251. William Blunt has uh, that's the first foul against William Blunt here in the second period. So no harm, no foul there. Got to be able to rebound. We got to be able to put a body on McNeely out of this zone. As they give it to Mullins. Back to McNeely, inside, turnaround jumper by Anderson. No good, in and out, and Hicks. That's two in and out for her. Is there to get it for William Blunt. So 2.30 to go, William Blunt trails by three. They nice hit pass. Everett, Everett's gonna travel. She was so surprised that the ball yeah. got there. It was yeah. a great pass by T. It was, I didn't think it would get through. So. Turnover for William Blunt. Yeah. 
into the high post area. Mullins kicks it out to Vining. Then a foul by Charlize. Charlize picks up her first drumming. Yes. She's got one. Teams. Chloe's got two. And Eliza's got one. So non-shooting. So William Blunt has Robbie within three points here with 208 to go. Feel like pretty much that's pretty good as Chloe has set one plus some minutes. Yeah, quarter quarter plus plus minutes. About a half. Was it about half the first quarter? Yeah, I think so. And now there's some kind of discussion. What's the discussion? Uh well he put that the the foul over here in the corner on Hicks was on um Everett. So I there maybe they're trying to get that figured out. I know Tyler didn't announce that the foul was on anybody whenever the foul was it called It was down. clearly on his. Yeah. I think he just got the numbers mixed oh, up. Oh, okay. so. he put two four instead yeah. of one four. Okay, four. okay. I see what you're saying. So, two minutes to go. Newbert penetrates in and then back out. McNeely up top as Farragut being very patient against the zone. I think this has slowed them down a it little bit. It has slowed them down. As they get it into Curry. Straight up. Don't Curry and double foul. team. Yes. And weakly throws it out, stolen by Scarlett. Got so numbers. Not now. With a buck 30 to go. Nice move by Rule. She block. puts her head down and just runs into somebody they call a jump. Oh, no. He had a foul. So That guy had a foul on number 22. Reno on the says it's a jump. By there was contact as McNeely was trying to get out of the way, I think, but she but still it's made it's contact. It's a initiate. blocking foul, but yeah, the outside official had it on the right side. I watched him put his hand up. Yeah. But, you know, Reno's the underneath guy, so I, I, I can't do Well, and more the veteran guy, too. So a lot of times, guys that are not have been in it as long will Defer, yield. Yeah. As Sweat comes back in for William Blunt. Yep. Johnston in as and there's, there's a another bad pass. It turns over out of bounds. Those are the turnovers you just... Yeah, I know. Uh, not even contested. And they have a few of those a game now. The last couple of games, they've had a lot of those. But, I mean, they need to... If they limit to those... If McNeely catches, I thought she's going to jack a three ball Who's there. As Newbert gets it out front with 105 to go. There's a shot by Mullins, no good. Rebound though by Newbert. So there, Robbie in the zone. She just got inside there. And they give it, and that's a oh, foul. Wow, sweat foul. Big time. And Johnston shot no good, but I figure Jason Mayfield be asking about that one. Nice re deflection there by McNeely as she was trailing. I'd like to see if we could hold it for one, but there's just no way, Stan. No. 43, as, as aggressive as they are, with 43 seconds to go. But William Blunt's only down three. As we looks like we have gotten the scoreboard fixed on the on the screen, so that is good. And there's another turnover. McNeely, nice, oh, wow. and she turns it back. She tried to get it back to Newbert, stolen by Sweat. Now possibly we could hold for 20. Scarlett gets it. Over to Darnell. Darnell thinks about driving. Kicks it out. Sweat's going to take a three. No good. Just short. Online, just short. Good look. 15 seconds to go. Farragut's going to take a timeout. It will take a 30-second break with him, Robbie. Yeah, Mayfield calls this timeout. Brought to you by Blevins Realty Group. Making buyers and sellers happy. We'll take a 30-second break. Fifteen, thirteen seconds to go. McNeely's going to give it up. He got two fouls to yeah. give. Sheridan 
too get easy. Back to Duber, too strong no there, though. but right to lay it back in is Johnston on the rebound. And that's just like the half ends, Robbie. 21 to 16. That was Johnston? Yep, Johnston on the putback. One half in the books. We'll take a short break here and be back with uh, halftime scoring and so on right here on Gov Nation Network and Voice of Champions. Back at William Blunt High School, where it is halftime. This is the Heartland Roofing Halftime Show, brought to you by Heartland Roofing. Give Nate a call for free estimates or free inspection. We'll move right into stats with Stan, where William Blunt finds themselves down 21 to 16 here, and uh, Carter will have the stats with Stan tonight. Yep, thanks, Stan. Uh, Stats with Stan brought to you by Tim Tipton. Give him a call. His numbers are there. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with the Farragut Admirals, or Lady Admirals, I should say. Their leading scorer, K.J. McNeely, with 10 points. Behind her, a couple girls with four, that being Curry and Newbert. Uh, we got a girl with two, that being Johnston, on the, the putback at the end of the second quarter. And then with one point is Sheridan. Boone to the Lady Govs now. Their leading scorer in the first half, Savannah Darnell with eight points. Behind her, Charlie Scarlett with two three balls, totaling up to six points. And then Allie Everett with two. So that puts your score at 21-16 in the first half. Lady Govs going to have to put in a few more baskets and play some good defense to get back in this game. Yeah, I agree, uh, Carter. But William Blunt finds herself in the ball game, Robbie, yep. here. It's a halftime. Yeah, so. that, that, and a lot of you held uh, KJ McNeely scoreless in the second quarter. Yes, uh, she had what ten in the 10 first. Ten in the first was scoreless in the second, so that helped. And then uh, so that made up for Chloe being on the bench. If you're Coach Kallenberg, you like where you're at. You know, you're down five, but you, you're not you're not out of it. Your your senior captain had to sit the bench the whole uh, quarter and a half. We'll take with that. We'll take another two-minute break, and we'll be back here with second-half action on Gov Nation Network and Voice of Champions.
Back at halftime here at the girls' contest, William Blunt finds himself down five points, 21-16. Not a bad, uh, not a half bad yeah. half of basketball. Uh, we're still in the game. Yeah. Uh, next, there's some other games going on in the area. Staying some good. Uh, the five-star preps uh, hoops jam over at Alcoa tonight. You have Alcoa taking on Hamilton Heights, and then uh, Maryville and Catholic. Uh, we'll follow that in boys' action. That should, should be two good games over there. Although Javon Carter, I think, turned his ankle uh, late in a tie ball game or one possession game against Bearden the other night, and uh, he's not playing tonight. Uh, so, and then tomorrow night, Maryville will be up at Oak Ridge. So that five-star preps putting on some pretty good teams there. Mar Maryville's got Catholic tonight, right? Catholic tonight, Fulton tomorrow. tomorrow night, yeah. And that's at Oak Ridge tomorrow. So. Yeah. Probably go check out the Rebels for the first time tomorrow. Yeah, that'll be see where they're at. Of course, Fulton's undefeated, I believe, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, they're going cool. into the uh, – they're probably got it. When, let's see. They play tonight. Yeah, no, they play somewhere tonight. I don't, I don't know if they're Austin East and Oak Ridge are playing tonight. That, uh, Austin East, uh, and I think they beat West the other night by two. And then another shocking score last night, Stan. Harden Valley loses to Carnes by two in boys. And Farragut boys beat Carnes by 40. Yeah. I don't think Carnes is nearly as good this year. But they beat Harden Valley. I know. That, 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 I, I saw that. But I think Carnes is like 5-5, five and five, aren't they? Yeah, something like that. They're definitely not what, and, not know, the region champion they were you, last you year. think about who they lost last year that they had. So. Oh, yeah. They lost uh, pretty much everything except for I think they returned uh, the corner shooter and a uh, little brother, Faulkner's little brother. So. That's pretty much all I remember. I did hear that they got a transfer from Central that just got eligible well, last night. Central's pretty good, too, in that region over there. Um, yeah, they've lost a couple of close games, too. Uh, but I think I think they may uh, be the runner-up to Oak Ridge in that region. Over Go there. over our schedule, uh, Stan. Uh, yeah, our get, next contest. It's going to be January 3rd. And that will be the Fulton Falcons who we were just talking about. That should be a really good boys That's game. 3A defending state champion and undefeated right now. We did beat them last year Over at, Fulton. at Fulton by 10. So they'll be wanting some revenge. And they return pretty much their yep. whole team that uh, won the state championship last year. So we'll take another one-minute break. Come back. Second half action here from the Marv. We are back for second half action. Be fair to get basketball to start half number two. And man they man. lead by five. McNeely gets to the rack, gets her shot deflected out of bounds. They said touch less by Farragut. Partially blocked, I think, by Everett. I'm not sure who got it. Somebody got it in there. Yeah, really good job by the Lady Govs in the first half, as we were saying over the break. Uh, still in this game, and Chloe Russell didn't play the majority of the first half. She turns it over there, though. Yeah, up against the press, and they get an easy layup by Johnston. So Johnston hit the last bucket in the first bucket. Yeah, she had before those, she was scoreless. She and got Allie wide up. open underneath. Oh, oh, man. A low pass she couldn't handle went out of bounds. So a couple of turnovers to start the second half for William Blunt. This is where you got to be careful and hope that they don't fall apart. 23-16 is your score. Three ball in the corner, no good. Rebound, I thought Everett had good position. She couldn't pull it down. Gets it to Newbert, who drains it. That was and big. Just, just like that, William Blunt's down 10. Couple turnovers, couple baskets. There's gonna be a foul on Vining for Farragut. It's her second, team first of the half. Ball rolls all the way to the corner. Retreat, but Donald dodged it. 
wonder how many high school basketball games he's seen. In his Say a few thousand. <laughs> Between playing and coaching and ADing and just sitting and watching. Russell kicks it out. Here comes a big three ball by Rule. Good. There it is. So Taylor. It's a blunt partnership three ball where careers and education come together, and that's a big one to stem the tide. Yep. Much needed right there. William Blunt did that in the first half as well, hit one that was much needed. So back against the zone. McNeely. Don't want to leave her open. Wow. Hits and the a bounce. shooter's roll. And a shooter's bounce, yeah. Savannah. There it is. D Darnell hits the layup. Blunt shredded the press. Yep. A good pass by Rule to find her underneath. Like a quarterback leading her. First girl into double digits for the Lady Govs is Savannah. So 29-21 your score. Wow, what a move. And no good. Allie Everett there to pull it. And then she got so They're going to call a walk. She was strong. She had the ball. And the girl, 24, hit her right on the hip. No call. Here comes the pass in. McNeely catches it. Pulls up the elbow, no good. Gets her own rebound. 24, held 24 again. And no good again. Darnell's there to get it. Blunt can run. Allie's Darnell running. can run. Attack the baseline. She does. And lay it up, lay it in. There we go. Savannah Darnell. Too easy for her. She's quicker than everybody on the floor. Six point game, 29-23. So Blunt clawing back in it. They fell behind a couple times by 10. And then here comes Newbert again. This shot, no good. Good box out by Russell. Come she out. gets on the floor and gets a jump ball to go to William Blunt. Hicks is set to check in for the Lady Govs. She will come in for, looks like it's going to be Charlie Scarlett. She doesn't come off the floor much, no. guys. Yeah, I was wondering. Might be something. Give her an aspect. Give her an aspect of seeing the game from the bench for a second. Maybe Coach Kallenberg wants to talk to her about something. As it, Darnell catches it, oh, lost loses the it going yeah. through, picked up by Mullins. Mullins is going to pull up the elbow and drain it. Nice shot. A little flat, but it went in. Mullins just a sophomore too, Robbie. That's so her first bucket. Pretty young team is this. Farragut much. They only have one senior, and that's Johnston on the roster. Farragut leads by eight, midway point, as we approach the midway point there of the quarter number three. Russell gives off to Everett. Everett! Wow! Step back three. Everett. Good. I believe that's her first career three. That's a, bow, that's a blunt partnership three ball for Allie. So blunt down by five only. There's a travel. No, it's going to be an offensive foul on Johnston. So Johnston pushed her elbow. Didn't really need to. She was giving the ball up. Scarlett checking back in. She'll check in for Hicks. Well, I guess trading defense for offense. They just probably need a quick Maybe they need some, yeah, an too. adjustment or talk to her just a second. Regardless, five-point game here for the Lady Governors. As, as Darnell loses her dribble, and they call a walk, which she did, I guess. Or a double. I don't know. I don't know what that call is. Call she, she's not allowed to be the next person yeah, to touch it. Yeah, it's a it's a violation, a clear violation. You've seen both both of it called both ways, but McNeely with a quick pass. They get it open to Newbert. Newbert with a three ball good. Wow, second of the quarter. So she can shoot it. We saw that last year at Heritage. Darnell catches oh. the long pass, misses it. I believe Curry kind of made her alter the way she was going in there, Robbie. It probably caused that miss. Here comes McNeely with the three ball. No good rebound by Darnell. Got that would have been a dagger three. And a foul? Rule does draw the foul from Newbert. They're going to say two shots, excuse me, so Rule 
We'll head to the line to try and cut in this lead. Taylor Rule's first trip to the line, no good. Substitution here for Farragut. Checks in, checking in, excuse me. It's a number, I believe that's a 23. So that'll be Anderson. Second sauce is short, but it's gonna be tipped back out to Rule. They get it to Scarlett. Scarlett bounce pass over. Movement quick, back is. out to uh, Chloe Russell. Get a clean pass. Darnell's gonna fire up a three ball. No good, but Russell's there to get it. She's gonna go up and draw a foul it's on underneath. It's gonna be in the act of shooting, I believe. Yep. That was almost a look what I found for Chloe. I don't think she was expecting that ball to come down towards her. She wasn't looking up at the rim, but she'll take it. So first free throws up and no good. Hicks checks in, she'll check in for roll. Chloe's first free throw, no good. Savannah was six for six. Everybody else is now one for six. Blunt down by seven with 250 to go here in the quarter. Newbert races into front court. Mm. Uh, Gets it into the high post to Mullins. Yeah, we're Mullins, fine. the fourth shot. Yeah, we'll live with that. And rebound. They, Hicks is going to come out. Each other. Actually, they did. Darnell's going to pick up the loose ball. And Darnell can run with it. He's got Scarlett. Spot it up, Scarlett. And they get it up to her. Good back, back cut. Back cut. Oh, Darnell can't it. handle it. So here comes Newbert racing into front court to McNeely. Back to Newbert. Newbert fakes the three, drives in, shot, two-point shot, no good. Rebounds it, and then Avert hooked her a little bit with her knee, I think, and it's going to be a blocking foul. And Everett got hit in the yeah, nose. Yeah, yeah, because she was way out of position. They're going to have to get her out. Rule's going to check in for her. That's a, that's a tough break for Allie. Cause that hurts, too. I don't know what happened, but she's definitely... Uh, I think she took an elbow to the face whenever. Her eyes are watered. Yeah. Sure. They kick it around. Anderson short, gets short. the shot. No uh, good. Follows her rebound. Gets it to McNeely in the front. She rushes it. No good. Rebound by Scarlett. McNeely's hit a lot of shots off the back of the rim. And Blocked. there's a blocking foul. Oh, yes. We'll take as I think that's going to be on Newbert. Her third, team fifth, so bonus for the final 143 here in the third. More importantly, Savannah can get this lead back to where it was at intermission if she can make them both. First free throw is good. Seven for seven now. And she now is tied with Newbert, or uh, McNeely with a game-high 13 points. Two substitutions here for Farragut. I believe it's Sheridan and Johnston. So they'll move down into the block. Second free throw, no good. Rolls around the back oh, of the rim. Oh, he's got it. So Blunt, uh, an opportunity here to get a three-point play. Or more, a four-point possession. Long. The shot's no good. Rebound on the back side. Wow. There's going to be a foul. That's Taylor. Mullins. That's Taylor's first, team second. So blunt down by six. A couple of three balls in the air that would have done some damage here. I haven't got them to go though. It's fair, gonna walk it up. Count is on. And timeout, time, Mayfield. Yep. This timeout's gonna be brought to you by East Tennessee Insurers, your ind local independent insurance agency. Give them a call and we'll take a 30 second break.
back at William Lund High School. After the timeout, minute 15 to go here in the third. William Blunt down by six to Farragut. He's pretty much led most of the game. A couple of brief times William Blunt were able to take the lead in the first quarter. And there comes a three ball from the corner by this time by number 12 who had checked in, Robbie, or Sheridan. Is that her first points of the night? She had a free throw in the okay. first quarter. Just like that, Fair gets up by nine. 37 to 28. And William Blunt turns it over. So 44.6 to go. That's not what you want to end the quarter here. Good timeout right there by Jason Mayfield, Robbie. He called a design set play against the zone. Got a three ball look and Sheridan knocked it down. McNeely. Johnston back to McNeely. 25 seconds to go in the quarter. Back up top to Mullins. Mullins penetrates down Anderson. Anderson is going to almost turn it over to Johnston, catches it, and she does make a bad pass in the corner, but picked back up. Somehow they get it back to Johnston. She blew the layup, but it'll stay with Farragut with 4.8 to go. They about turned it over three times, and now they still have the ball. Yeah, they're still going to be able to get a last-second shot off, probably. Barn. Everett checks in here. So good to see she'll check in for Hicks. Yeah, maybe some size underneath. As it's going to come out to Sheridan. The ball's tipped out of bounds. That's a pretty good job right there by Rule. 1.6 to go now. Going to have to get it up quick. This is pretty much going to be a catch and shoot. And don't let Sheridan catch it down in the three-point shot. It's short. Good look, though. Third quarter comes to a close. Farragut extends their lead out to nine, 37-28. Don't go anywhere. You're watching on Gov Nation Network and listening on AM 1470. Fourth quarter action here at the Marv on a Friday night where William Blunt finds herself down nine and there comes a three ball this time by Sheridan, no, Anderson. Anderson's shot is no good, William Blunt gets it. Darnell in front court. All right, who's gonna get us a bucket? Yeah. Who wants a bucket right here? They got the stop to start the fourth quarter, now they need the bucket. Attack her left side. Scarlett. Gives to Chloe Russell. Back to Rule. Rule. In trouble. Finds a friend, which is Scarlett. Back out to Darnell. Over to Russell. Russell hits the cutting. Darnell, or excuse me, Scarlett, yeah, but she walked. Shuffled. shuffled her feet. Good, Good call. call. So that's a turnover. 7.13 to go. Has Chloe scored? Uh, one free, free throw. throw, one out of two. I don't well, know if she, she ever shot many other ones. No, nah, she, of course, first half, she set a lot of the time. That's There's going to be a backcourt violation against Farragut. As Anderson, it went right through her hands. And a turnover for Farragut. Timeout, Coach Kallenberg. This timeout's going to be brought to you by Circulation Station Relieving Pain with Technology. Get three free treatments when you mention you listen to the voice of champions, AM 1470. Stan, we'll keep it here. 
you have something to say? No, I did not. Oh, okay. but we'll keep it here as we look through the score scoreboards right here. Robbie, I don't have a lot of scores on here. I see this one, Sevier County leading Morristown East 19-18 at the half. That's, That's a team William Blunt beat, Morristown East. Right. And, and, uh, and they're 9-2. and two. Yes, they're a really good team. And that's what I'm saying. When we beat them, I thought this team yeah. has turned the corner. They they can beat anybody. They can play with anybody. And so. Well, I, I suspect that Sevier County could be back in the state again, maybe. They're looking, like I say, they're looking like it. So, but yeah, that shows you. This William Blunt girls team can play. Just got to put it together here for these final six, seven minutes. Nice back cut, lay it up, lay it in for Darnell. And a good find there by Russell. That was a tight window. She got it through. Cuts it to seven, 37-30. So good time for Blunt to rally right here. Just down seven. And there comes his long shot. No good uh. by Sheridan, but right there is Newbert to pick it up and put it in. So Blunt got kind of what they wanted. Just didn't rebound out of the zone. As Sheridan got a shot, she wasn't wide open. It was kind of a forced shot. But the miss is Darnell beats her man and goes to the, uh, draws the foul right there. I think it was on Sheridan, maybe. We'll see here what Reno says. It's two shots. Could be McNeely. Yep, you're right, Stan. Sheridan, her first foul, team first of the fourth. She beat Sheridan off the dribble. First free throw up, good. And on the ninth, eight Savannah, out of nine. Savannah's got a total of eight and out of nine. On the free throws, uh, 10, 12, 14, 16 points. She's playing pretty good right now. Long. Second one, no good. Allie, grab it. Everett there She's to clean fouled. it up. And then a foul, oh, oh a jump wow. ball. 22, 20 came from yeah. around her body. He'll stay with William Blunt, though. So 39-31. Allie's played really good on the boards tonight. She has a couple. And there's a turnover. McNeely skits it. She has several offensive rebounds, Robbie. Does yeah. Allie ever. I think four from what I've got. As Mullins gets her instructions from Jason Mayfield. McNeely steps out. Now, I'll say this. William Blunt may have to go man is with this eight point lead or eight point deficit. Okay. As there's a foul by Everett. 547 to go. Maybe not a bad foul though. Foul Robbie, I, I can see Jason Mayfield like kind of just like taking letting the air out in this zone if Blunt's not careful. Well uh, he hasn't showed that sign yet. And there's a turnover on the inbounds. Scarlett gets it. Picks up her dribble, gives to Darnell. Darnell's going to blow by McNeely. They're going to call a block uh, from behind. Not a blocking foul, but a block deflection out of bounds. It'll stay with William Blunt. It shows you how athletic McNeely is. Yeah, because Savannah usually gets that all yep. the way to the backboard. Come on. Here comes Scarlett with a big three ball. Short. And rebound by McNeely. Better stop her. Shot no good, gets her own rebound. Backs it back out to Mullins. Neely has 13 points. She had 10 in the first quarter. And Mullins hits to the mid-range jumper. That's and two, two mid-range jumpers for Lily Mullins. They lead by 10. Darnell gets a seam and draws a foul. It's on the on floor. The floor. Probably against Mullins. It is. It's going to be Mullins second, team second, so non shooting be underneath. 5.02 left here in the fourth. Lady Govs trailing by 10, 41 31. Pass comes into Darnell. Over to Scarlett. Oh. Oh, and there's going to be well, actually saved by Darnell as Scarlett wasn't looking, almost a turnover. All the way. McNeely's getting fouling her, and then finally Curry yes. gets called for the foul. Darnell will get to back to the line again. Absolutely. So Savannah Darnell it. pretty much doing all that by herself. Able to save the turnover and drive to the basket. Now she's at the line for two. 
Every possession from here on in has to be valued by William Blunt. Darnell hits the first one. With 4.47 to go. She has been over half of the William Blunt offense tonight. Second toss for Darnell, good. All right, got to find stops. Yep, eight point game. Blunt's going to pick up a little bit of a, some pressure. Farragut breaks it. They get back to Mullins who drains the three. Yeah, and you don't want wow. that shot to be open on the broken press. Well, I, I kind of like the press to speed him up a little bit to, quit, to get that quick shot, but you said they got that one open. And there's a steal by McNeely and a foul by Russell. So this one is starting to slip away from William Blunt. Three team, or two. Yeah, that's just the second team foul. Hicks checks in for Everett here. So Fair get with it, working against the press. Mullins to Johnston, they get it across to McNeely. To Mullins, here she's gonna pull up from the free throw line, gets the row. That is. So the mid-range magician. That's nine second half points for Mullins. Didn't score in the first half. The mid-range magician is wearing number two tonight. Darnell to the basket. She gets the row from in front. Much needed basket there for Savannah and the Lady Governors. They're down 11 with three and a half to go here in the contest. Mullins. Gives it over to Newbert. Newbert back into the middle and a foul is going to be called on Hicks. It's her first, team third, or her second, team third. So 322 left. Fourth quarter three-pointers are brought to you by the Roll Arena. We haven't got any yet. Your birthday specialist. And at the conclusion of this game, we'll name our Gov Nation Murphy Bobcat player of the game. And it looks like it's going to be Savannah Darnell, who's got 20 points, lead all scores. McNeely with a big three ball from the top of the key, and that is an adios for the Lady Governors tonight. McNeely's 16th point, her fourth triple of the night. And that adios brought to you by Heartland Roofing. Nice move by Chloe, no good, but there's Hicks to put it back up and in for William Blunt. So Hicks says not so fast, 250 to go, William Blunt down by 12. That's the first person to score besides Savannah here in the fourth quarter. Dubert picks her turnover. up, throws it away. I think, was that yeah. off William Blunt? No, it was a, no. a turnover. Oh, that's what yeah. I thought, yeah. They all were going back the other way. I thought it was, a, well, that ball was far from deflected. 2.40 to go, so Blunt could get it back to 10 or under 10. They have to be patient and they have to be very productive with every yeah, possession. Yeah, be efficient. Rule. Over to Darnell. Darnell can beat McNeely. She gives it to Charlize for a big three ball. That's There's what you your want. Roll Arena three ball. Timeout by Coach Mayfield. He's not happy with JC. He's not. We'll take a timeout with them, Robbie. Yeah, it's brought to you by the Bonner Burger, home of the two for $9 quarter pounders with cheese. 30 second break. Nine forty. Yep. Two minutes remaining here in the game. Here comes a skip pass to Newbert for a big three. No good. Air ball. Rebound by Darnell. So Blunt can get it down under nine at this point as they kick it out to Hicks. 
as we go under the two-minute mark. Rule. Darnell. Darnell's going to try to go through. Loses it. Picked up by Hicks. Over to Rule. Or, excuse me, Russell. Here comes another big three ball by Charlize. No good. Good box out by the senior, Johnston. And she draws the foul from Hicks. Hicks third. Team fourth. Wow. If that shot could have went down by Charlize Robbie. That, that oh, uh... Stan starts to sweat up here with his audio yeah. call. 20, 2,682 and oh, <laughs> record. As McNeely almost walks. Oh, she, she did, did walk. You know, that was Mullins. McNeely now did yeah. one before. And there's a steal, and here comes a layup by Mullins. That's a double audio. Mc, McNeely. Right there. I mean, McNeely, yeah, 51 40. That's a big break right there. As William Blunt had the steal, but they get it back, and then a wide open layup by McNeely seals it again. And one, uh, one minute to go as Darnell gets the runner. No good. Rebound by Russell. Russell's going to go full back up. She's going to draw the foul from Johnston. Two shots coming, exactly one minute left in this contest. One thing the Lady Gills will be able to take from this game is how, how they competed. Uh, and Chloe, Definitely. Chloe with only one point tonight, Stan. Yeah, that's uh, so. So, of course, hampered with foul trouble. She right. only played about maybe, maybe four minutes in the first half. Right. So, and uh, the three balls, we have a total of four on the night. Farragut, ten. Second toss is good. So Blunt gets it back under ten at nine with one minute to go. Mullins gives it back to McNeely. McNeely over to Newbert. Newbert, oh, beats her man, picks up. Still actually stolen Savannah. from behind from Darnell. Here comes Russell with 45 seconds to go. Gives it off to Rule, and she dribbles off her foot. That's a turnover, backcourt. Robbie, think about where would this Farragut team be if without Newbert? Without Newbert, if she hadn't have transferred. And think about where Heritage would be. Yes. I think Heritage might be your 3A favorite in the state, which they may still be. I don't know yeah. what 3A looks like. But I, just... well, I look for them to make a run to the state tournament. I, I don't really know what it's like in the other well, part half of the time, they were At halftime tonight against the number two team in their district, they were up by 30. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think they'll run through their district. They'll run through their region without any problems here. Is this going to be a foul on Scarlett? So that'll send them to the I line. I believe that'll be two shots, won't it? Is that Mullins? Yep. That's the fifth. Yeah, Mullins will be your shooter. 23.9 to go. And Mullins with the nine second half points has been huge for them. And Newbert, eight. Second toss is good. That puts them up by 10. One will get down, maybe get, try to get a list, one last shot off here. We go under 20 seconds. Rule does. Shot short. Tipped out of, actually tipped out. McNeely's got it. William Blunt will not foul with 10 seconds to go. McNeely has to get it across. And she does. She'll dribble it out, and William Blunt put up a valid effort tonight. They lose by 10. But I think Coach Kallenberg can take away a lot of good things heading over to Anderson County next week. Yep. We'll try to talk to him as they go into Christmas break. We'll talk to him, hopefully, in between games. Final score here is 52-42 in favor of Farragut. We'll take a two-minute break. We'll be back for boys' action right here on Gov Nation Network and Voice of Champions.
Welcome to the post game show, Heartland Roofing post game show, brought to you by Heartland Look Roofing. Give Nate a call for any free estimates or a free inspection. 865-323-5933 is his number. Uh, Five-star rating on Google, A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau for Heartland Roofing, and we appreciate them doing our pregame, postgame, and halftime shows here on Gov Nation Network. We'll move right into stats with Stan with, and William Blunt on this one loses 52-42. Uh, Stats of Stan, of course, brought to you by Tim Tipton. Tim Tipton Realty. Give Tim a call if you need any kind of realty need. You see his number, office number, as well as his sale number right there on the screen. Tim's a very experienced realtor here in the Blunt area to take care of any kind of needs you need. With that, I will turn over the stats with Stan, uh, with not Robbie, but Carter will have the final scoring here in the girls contest. Thank you, Stan. We'll start with the victorious Lady Admirals. Their leading scorer tonight, KJ McNeely, she had 18. Behind her, two girls, JC Newbert, Lily Mullins with 12 and 10, and then a couple girls with four, four, excuse me, that being Johnson, Sheridan, and Curry. Now, the Lady Govs, their leading scorer tonight, Savannah Darnell with 20. Behind her, you have Charlie Scarlett with three three balls that totaling up to nine points. One girl with five, that being Allie Everett. Um, let's see, we got a couple girls with two, that being Taylor Rule and uh, Chloe Russell. And then one girl with two, uh, Liza Hicks, on the two ball um, in the fourth quarter. So that's, that your, that's your final score being 52-42. Lady Gubs lose by 10 um, in a tough matchup. And something that they can really build on is you saw a lot of really good things from the Lady Gubs, just couldn't finish tonight. Right, exactly, Carter. And, uh, of course, they've got... Uh, I think three games next week over to Anderson County. Then after Christmas, they'll be headed down to Destin for the tournament down there. So they've got quite a few things to work on. And really, they don't get back into district play until January 9th. They come back after Christmas. They have Fulton here. And then, of course, Heritage, the return trip at Heritage out there, which will be a touch ma tough matchup for them on that Friday night. So their first district game, their next district game, then will be back on January 9th at Hardin Valley. So with that, we'll take another two-minute break. Hopefully we'll get the halftime, or the, excuse me, the post-game interview with Coach Kallenberg right here. Two-minute break on Gov Nation Network. Back at William Blunt High School, this is the Heartland Roofing post-game show. And where William Blunt finds herself losing by 10 to the Farragut Lady Admirals, 52-42. Your final score, Robbie. William Blunt, you know, they did have the lead a couple times in the first quarter, one point. They only trailed by two at the quarter, 
then Farragut was able to build on that a little bit at a time. They didn't really, they never really got more, I don't think, than 11, or actually got up 14 at one point, but that was the biggest lead, Robbie, and you know, pretty competitive game all the way down, but William Blunt um, not able to get the, get it done here tonight as they dropped to five and six. Yeah, and, and just, but it's just, just a couple plays away there in the fourth quarter, you know, the lead got up to, what, 13, and that's yeah. too hard to come back with just a few minutes left, and they were, they had a three ball in the air to cut it to six, uh, just, just some things to build on, and uh, and then you got this trip. We'll talk to Jason about it. They got a, a team building trip uh, down in Florida. So right. we'll talk about what they're going to do over holiday break. Well, yeah, they got Anderson County next week, Robbie. They're back right. at it, I think, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday maybe next week. I know they play Oneida yeah. in the opening round. So uh, probably a pretty good matchup there. Is Oneida is a good single A team. Double A. Are I they think. double A? I think they're double A okay. now. So. But it at, uh, also in that bracket is Clark Range, who's a very good single A team. I think they won it last year. They might did. Have, or might have lost to Harden Valley in the championship game. But uh, Harden Valley is not in it on the boys' side this year. They might be in it still on the girls' side. I'm not sure. So There's a couple teams that aren't, like, they right, mixed up. Yeah. So uh, regardless, and then – It'll be Christmas break. They'll take a few days off. Then they head right after Christmas. I think the day after Christmas, they head to Destin. Yep. And so that, like you said. That was the team building trip yeah. because, you know, you're out of town. Right, exactly. That's what I was talking about that one. But, uh, yeah, the boys will uh, be We'll talk about this boys contest yeah. coming up, Robbie, as we wait on Coach Callenberg to come up here. And I look over this Farragut roster. I see some a lot of familiar names, although some of them are younger siblings. <laughs> yeah. Like Carball and then Van Aker. Got yeah. two Van Akers on there now. Of course, Dominique is a junior now, but his uh, well, brother his, Aiden his is brother a senior. senior. Yeah. Uh, he's a, and he's but really, this team, Robbie, is the talented sophomore, Parker Lane. Yeah. He's an all district player last year as a freshman and uh, definitely has the pedigree as his dad was a. Big time college player at uh, Georgia that, Tech, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think he might be still Oak Ridge's all time leading scorer. So, yeah. Uh, so, anyway, uh, yeah, they definitely got the t team. And the last few years, it's been a, quite a battle. Every it game has. that William Blunt and Farragut have played have been tough, tight games. And really, it starts with the defense. Farragut, a couple years ago, started playing defense at just phenomenal stand. I thought their defense these last three years have just been terrific. And it's really been the reason why they've been able to uh, uh, yeah, make, I, this, make a jump up to the top part of the district. Of course, two years ago, John Higgins was the coach. He left and went to Science Hill. So this is year two for J.P. Bur Bur Burris, Robbie. And I noticed he's got a very seasoned assistant on the bench, and that being Shane Wells, yeah, who had a lot of success at Hardin Valley. C.A.K. C.A.K. Uh, was at Lenore City, I think, before yeah. that. So... Uh, it's very good for a young coach like JP to have that veteran assistant on his staff. It's like having two head coaches almost. Yeah, but uh, they, they're three and eight, I believe, is their overall record right now. But look at the schedule that they've played. They've played some really tough teams, and I don't get fooled by that three and eight record. They are tested, and here comes Coach Kallenberg. So we'll yes. have a couple minutes with him. Yeah, we'll have a couple minutes here with Coach Kallenberg, and we'll go to the uh, courtside interview or the post-game interview here. So, Coach, thanks for coming up. Absolutely. And, uh, um, great effort tonight. I felt like your girls did a lot of good things. They just didn't do enough to get over the top. But you guys battled back. You know, you fell down. Pretty competitive game. Then you got down, I think, by 14. But had a chance, a three ball in the air to cut it to six in the yeah. fourth quarter. Did and like that's what we talked about. Um, you know, I'm not, and not just me. We're we're just not much for moral victories, but you know the past the past two games and then the effort that we gave tonight, I, I was proud of. Yeah. Um, it showed you know some resolve and some grit. Um, like I said, the way it had been the past two games, just we were kind of teetering and you know been a long week, but they played hard tonight. And I, you know, and I told them I think they got a little bit more left in the tank. Yeah. Um, but it was very, very proud of the effort, and it's definitely something I think we can build on. 
Yeah, you talk about a long week. You had a couple games. Plus, the girls had finals, you know, and it just now you get a little bit of a breather. To talk about this uh, Christmas break and what you got uh, lined up. Well, so hopefully get some of them healthy. We got a few of them play tonight that are sick, banged up. Um, but we'll be off tomorrow and Sunday. We'll come in practice Monday, get ready for a good Oneida team on Tuesday at Anderson County. Um, but we'll come in practice in the morning, and then we'll go down and, and, and have our Christmas party down in Knoxville and, you know, spend some quality time that we don't get to do a whole bunch of outside of practice. So looking forward to that. And then, you know, it's three games in three days. Yeah, it's, it's really good, though, with these, to have these tournaments like this because it's, it's a little bit less pressure, I feel like, maybe. You know, not, not the district game, right. and not playing the crosstown rivalry, Heritage, and so forth. Right. So, you know, teams you may be familiar with, but you don't see them every year, right. maybe. So, right. So, uh, it kind of just lets you get, I don't want to say it's more than a scrimmage, but it's kind of like a scrimmage yeah. atmosphere is going in. Right, yeah. And like I said, I mean, I think that the kids are excited about, you know, seeing somebody different and be the same thing when we go to Sandestin after right. Christmas. So, um, you know, some we're looking forward to. I, you know, it really gives you the opportunity to work on things, though, right? It does, yeah, and that's and that's something that, you know, we've got to sit down as a staff, and, I mean, obviously we're still making a concerted effort of trying to get better on the glass, and, you know, I know it's a little bit harder out of a zone. But, but you did better tonight. I right. thought Allie, Allie had, I think, four or five offensive rebounds. That's on the other end. Right. But, but I thought you guys did a better job on the glass on both ends. Of yeah, the absolutely, I do. We just we gave up some in some tough situations and then, you know, tried to change up on them defensively, and, you know, of course – what always seems to play out, they had a kid knock down a shot, and I mean, you See, it know. seems like Mullins got hot in the second, and she hit the mid-range. You know, I think she scored six or eight points yeah. in a row, just pull up, shoot it, and so that's what we were talking about is where would that Farragut team be without J.C. Newman transferring this year? So, oh, yeah, absolutely. And where would Heritage be yeah. with them? Oh, yeah. So. I just, you know, I, I just hate it for our kids. It's because, like, and, and they'll tell you if they were up here, like I ask them all the time in huddles, hey, what do y'all want to go to right here? Like, what do you feel like gets you a bucket? Or what do you feel like defensively? And, you know, hey, let's get in and see. And then, you know, they come down and hit a shot. And it just kind of is you're trying to make a run, deflate you a little bit. And, you know, you just hate it for them. But it is what it is. And we just got to regroup and get better at it. All right, Coach. Well, enjoy your weekend. And uh, good luck to you guys at Anderson County and down in Florida. Yes, sir. And we'll catch back up with you with Fulton on January 3rd. Well, got something special on January 3rd. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, Merry Christmas to you guys. You Thank you. Here's your Butler, Lon Butler starting lineup for the Govs. Number five, Brett Cortez. Number four, Trevor Scarlett. 21, Lucas Henson. Number 11, G Rob, Grady Robertson. And number 20, C Dub, Caden Wendell. We want with a record now of 9 and 1. Fresh off a 26 or 7 point win over at Campbell yeah, County. I think 26, I believe, Robbie. Was it? 77 51, maybe. Wasn't that close in the second half. Anywhere Movers tip brought to you by Anywhere Movers. Give Alvin Janetta a call, 865-235-4108. Head referee will be Reno Hall. Fair gets in gray tonight. William Blunt in all white. Tipped up by Wendell into the hands of Grady Robertson. And Farragut will go man to man. Robertson has it right side, goes to the corner to Cortez. Inside pin is block on the block is Wendell. Shot up, short, Ooh. missed it. Rebound, Henson over to Scarlett. Soft touch did not get the roll there for Caden. But we did get the offensive board. Travel on Robertson. He's been called for that three times this year, and I, I don't. I didn't see it, but. I guess they're saying the slight shuffle before he drives, but other than that, I don't, I don't know what they're saying. I'll give you fair against players as it'll be Bob, uh, Dominic Van Ecker. Now left side to Naro. 12 is Lanning. Number five is Aiden Van Ecker, and four will be Spadafora. Van Ecker to Van Ecker, off nearly deflected by Cortez. Defense is extended out. Inside layup, no good. Rebound into the hands of Wendell. That was Spadafora who missed it. Wendell finds Grady, steps into a three, bottom. Quick with the offense, 
on the board. William wants good in the transition. Uh, post extended now, top of the key is Naro. Left side, Don Van Ecker, good pull up. He had a big game against Sevier County Tuesday Aiden. night. That was Aiden Van Ecker. G Rob with it, crosses over, gets ball deflected as he went to the Scarlet. As they know, they will not let Scarlet have any clean looks. It looks like they're really pushed out on him. Cortez will trigger it in. He'll find Lucas Henson. Back to Cortez. Now Grady has it. 6.20 to go in the opening quarters. 3-2, William Blunt. Robertson up top. Will hand to Wendell. Pump fakes a three. Gets to a pull-up 15-footer. No good. Wendell starts the game 0 for 2. That doesn't happen much. Here's a deflection. Oh. Aiden has it in the front court. Left side, stolen by Grady. Grady's got to run out Here's dunk. Here's dunk. G-Rob. And that looked like he threw it. Yeah. yeah, Dominic just threw the ball. He pushed him with the ball after on the inbounds. Here's Spada forward to Naro. Cortez will follow Dominic on this play. Here is Aiden with it, throwing it nearly out of bounds. Now he's going to fire a three. No good. Rebound, Scarlett will run it down into the corner. Grady across the timeline with the left-hand bounce. Goes to the corner to Caden. Caden tries to turn the corner, can't. Find Scarlett in the corner. A little reset with uh, Brett up top. Guarded by Lanning. He'll find Scarlett right side. Couple dribbles with the left hand. Finds a post up in Cortez. Cortez gonna work against Lanning. They're gonna give him a push in the act of shooting. Well, I guess it was as he was turning around to put the ball up. Say that foul was on Lanning? Yeah. Dan Lanning, isn't he the coach of Oregon? <laughs> First free throw is good by Brett. He'll have one more. 6-0, or 6-2, excuse me. Parker Lane checks in for the Admirals as the second free throw is no good off the front of the rim. Well, Parker Lane didn't start tonight. Yeah. That's kind of odd, I think. Well, I don't know. Might need to change something. Else. There's Dominic Van Ecker. Nails the three. It's six to five. He's the ultra athletic, really springy junior for the Admirals. Scarlett breaks the count. Left hand bounce into the paint. Cut off nicely. Goes back out to Robertson. Robertson will attack the elbow. Pull up 15 footer long. And high for the board was Dominic Van Ecker. Left side to spat a four. Back to Dom. Straight Can't away three. Him. Good. Nope. Trailing Can't there on over. the trailing there after the board. Wide open at the top of the key. Farragut has their first lead of the game. Eight to six. Window into the front court. Back to Cortez. Around the horn to Robertson. He's got Scarlet up top. Guarded nicely by Parker Lane. Can't get nothing up. Oh, it's hard He missed the layup. Oh. Wow. Cortez set a screen on Lane. Lane might be still be dizzy. Yeah, he, he is. So he got hit hard. Trevor into the front court. Cortez has got Wendell inside. Can't get it to now. Yeah, he can. Him. There's a dunk. A little baby dunk for Wendell. Eight to eight. Needs to spend more time on the Vertimax. Spat of four into the front court. Guarded tightly by Cortez. Turns the corner. Finds Lane. Now to Dom. Better not put a hand down, Grady. That was over the back of the... Hit the wire. Yeah, hit the top. Top. Caden to Grady. Up top. Out of bounds be off us. of Farragut. Dabrowski well, checks in. He'll check in for Henson. About what we expected so far here in the first four, four and a half. Inside the window, shot short. Oh, he misses the bunny. Draws a foul. Dom. Wendell's 0 for 3. No, he's 1 for one for 4. I'm sorry, yeah, 1 for 4. Dominic Van Aker with his first foul, team second. Two shots coming for Caden. As he missed the little bunny, was able to get his rebound and draw the foul. First free throw is good.
William Blunt regains the lead, 9-8. Two for two. So the Gov lead extended to two. He'll pick up three-quarter court here. Uh, it's full court, man to man. Lane has it left side. He'll tack. Elbow jumper, a little baseline jumper, no good. Rebound to Browski in the middle of the court. Right hand bounce all the way down the lane, finds nobody. Oh. Too late. I think he should have just shot that. Yeah, he should have. He should have. Took one more dribble and get the layup because they, the other guys were kind of not expecting him to. Right. So about three minutes left here as Spadafora brings it across. Working the right hand bounce, hand off to Vanacker, now top to Naro. Naro to, wow, just switched the screen and let it wide open three. It's third one already for Dominic Vanacker. Yep, miscommunication there defensively for the Govs as Farragut retakes the lead. Cortez in the corner, picks up his dribble, finds Dabrowski, guarded by Aiden Vanacker. Back to Cortez, 2-2-2 two, two, two left here in the first quarter. Farragut leads 11-10. Inside pass, deflected, Cortez, one wow. extra pass. Dabrowski has a corner three, short. First quarter three balls, and we've only hit one, so they're brought to you by Murphy Bobcat. 2.05 to go, Naro hands to Aiden Banecker, misses. Rebound Robertson, under two minutes to go as he brings it across. He finds Caden off his leg, out of bounds, turnover. It just feels like the Govs have struggled to find consistency offensively so far here in the first quarter. You know, a few turnovers, a few missed shots. Some wide open looks from Dom. Yeah, yes. yeah, the defense is where. Yeah. You know, there's a narrow shot. No good, but draws the foul, I think, from Cortez. Two shots coming for Naro. It is going to go against Brett, his first team's first. Narrow. Okay, I guess. Nails the first one. I think it's narrow. Pretty sure that's what okay. Eric told me earlier. I was just repeating what Tyler Right. Regardless, Two for two from the line. Yeah. 13 to 10. Minute and a half remaining here in the first quarter. Inside pass to Caden. His shot up. No good. Rolled around, man. One for five from the field. Wow. A couple of easy ones, too. That one just went all the way around the rim. Spada four with it. Left side extended. One ten left here in the opening quarter with a three-point lead. Narrow shot. Baseline jumper good. Great first quarter for the Admirals here on the road. Wendell will find Scarlett. Guarded out by the timeline. Now Dabrowski has it. Dabrowski spins in the paint. We'll call a walk. Out of four across the timeline. Five point lead Admirals inside pass thrown away. Thirty seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Fifteen to ten. Ten points, slow start for the Govs. Scarlett backing his man down. Nearly fouled. We'll find Dabrowski for a layup. There it is. Thirteen on the play clock or on the game clock as they bring it across. We'll find Vanacker with eight. It's tipped away. Vanacker with three. And over to Aiden. In and out. Tip no good. Rebound for William Blunt. Your score at the end of one. Barry at 15. William Blunt 12. We'll take a 60 second break.
All right, set for second quarter. William Blunt only got 12 points up in that first quarter. That's, that's not going to get it done. But, like I said, Stan, these last three years, Farragut's defense has been sound. I think it's pretty sound again. Parker Lane shot up, shot in. Hand in his face, doesn't matter. 18 the, to 12. Remember the shot he hit last year over there? Yeah. Send this game to overtime. Wendell has it, left side. Hands to Grady. Grady will attack. He traveled. Travel. Good call. He did. He slid. Robbie, they, they just play sound defense. They keep you in front of you almost, and, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's, uh, I think, a little frustrating to William Blunt right now, maybe. Oh, that's too easy. Way too easy. Way too easy. That's not a foul. They're going to call one on Robertson. Cheap one. His first, team's first in the second half, second quarter. And Aiden Van... Acker will be at the line to look to complete the old-fashioned three-point play. And he does. Second quarter three balls will be brought to you by Bowen Door Service. Making your best first impression. We're going to need some. Yeah, Blunt down by nine. This might be the biggest deficit of the year. Probably, yeah. Right in trail Hamilton. Robertson finds Cortez. Saves it over to Wendell. 6.50 to go. Cortez catching fire three. No good. Short over the backboard. Online, just short. What they've done, they've taken the William Blunt students completely out of this game, Robbie. Yep. As fair get here. Another nice crowd for the student section for William Blunt, but the hot shooting of Van Acker to start. There's Lane, a clean look. Lane misses. Oh, no good, rebound Cortez. He's got Lipinski on the right side. Lipinski will attack. Charge will be drawn. Looked like he tried to avoid it, but they're gonna call a charge. Dominic Van Acker takes that one. It's a big call, because that would have been Van Anker's second. I don't understand what the discussion would be about. They don't know who it was, and on. Reno, they called for Reno. No, 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 no. They were getting ready to call yeah, it on They were about to call it on, on Caden. Huh? How do they not know who had the ball? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I mean, that looks to me like... Uh, I'm going to keep quiet. Van Acker finds the lane on the right side. William Lott, one 3 one here. No, he'll get a shot up. Well, good job. Oh, wow. Why did Lane not take the wide open shot? I guess he felt Caden might have had a shot to block it. Tried to drive to the lane. Walked instead. So Robertson will take it over the timeline. So scoreless two minutes. Wendell will... Walt. This guy's a little trigger happy yeah, on the travel. I didn't, I didn't think Lane walked on the other end, and I didn't think Wendell walked there. He's had two back-to-back -back walks. There should have been a third one. That's a tip. He just pulled up on the yeah. rim. They didn't call it. Yeah, that should have been. Coach Wendell calls timeout. This timeout going to be brought to you by Trinity Chiropractor. We'll get your life forces switched on with Dr. Evan Butcher. We'll take 
the 60 second break. Robertson has it, guarded closely, he's bumped. It's gonna be a foul call on number 11, Lewis who's checked in, and he picks up the foul, his first, team's first in second half, or second quarter. It will be William Blitz ball on the baseline. So I think Coach, Coach Wendell, Robbie, called timeout and had a, long, had a heated discussion with Reno about the technical should have been called. You could swing on the rim to protect your fall, but as you said, you but can't pull, pull up. Yeah. Yeah. Even in the NBA, LeBron got one the other night. Henson checks in here for the Govs. Checking out is Lipinski. Robertson attacks, lays up no good, tipped up by Wendell, up and in. So the first points of the second quarter took nearly three minutes. Handoff to Van Ecker, his layup no good. Draws the foul. Two shots coming. He's hurt. It's going to go against Cortez, his second. Have to bring Dabrowski in for him. So Van Acker. Somebody call it one of the flagger. One of the flagger. Oh, one of the Farragut fans. It's the first free throw by Van Acker is good. Dabrowski will check in for Cortez. He's <laughs> clapping back with the stand. The students bricks a free throw. First miss of the night for the strike for the Admirals. Henson, Lucas Henson shot up. Good. That was smooth. Tough two for Lucas. 16 to 24 now, 450 left here in the second quarter. Farragut leads by eight. Parker Lane working against Dabrowski. Hands to Lanning. Finds Van Ecker. He'll attack. Can't get it up. Goes to Naro. Naro, baseline jumper. No, that's a tough two. and didn't get it to go. Backside board Grady. He'll bring it across the timeline. Spins in the paint. Still dribbling. Burkett, Burkett's metaphor. Puts his shoulder down. I'm going to call a block on Naro. the floor. Or, no, it's... Spadafora, isn't it? Yeah. His first. Uh, he went for the charge, bit of a flop. Team second. That one's just thrown out of bounds Come by on, Dabrowski. Guys. Looked like it slipped out of his hands. Parker has it, left side to Dom. Picks up his dribble. Blunt didn't even know who we had, I don't think. Lanning, that was a travel if they call those other ones. Parker Lane attacks, eight-footer shot. Strong rebound, Lucas Henson. Up to Robertson. Trailing by eight, four to play here in the second quarter. Robertson finds Lucas, lay it up, lay it in. Four in a row for Lucas. Should have been and one. Yeah, there was contact underneath. Got him with the hip, no call. Spadafora will bring it across, working against Dabrowski. He'll turn the corner, find nobody, turnover. Yep, trying to get to Naro underneath. It would have been open if it was a good pass, but it wasn't. Aiden Van Aker is going to check back in, this time for Lanning. So, Blunt. After the timeout, Robbie on a, has cut the lead from 11 to 6. Wendell has it on the left side, guarded by Van Acker. Finds Grady in the corner. 
Wants a clear out. Crosses over. Now backs down. Spider four row. Baseline jumper is good. Timeout. J.P. Burris as the William Lutz cut the lead down to four. 24 to 20. This timeout brought to you by South Park Storage and Penske Truck Rolls. At the end of William Blood Drive and 411 South, we'll take a 30 second break. remaining here in the first quarter is the late, or uh, excuse me, first half as the Govs have uh, chipped away at Farragut's lead. Parker Lane attacks, finds Spadaforo. Clean look for three, long rebound off of Farragut. Yep. Spadaforo's kind of lost with, lost in the sauce the last couple plays. The hype, the crowd, the crowd finally getting into it some more <laughs> since the uh, slow start. Try to get this thing tied before halftime. Scarlett hasn't got a shot up besides a missed layup that he had. Robertson puts it in front of Spadafora. He batted it away. High post to Wendell. Shot up. Shot there in. 22-24. 230 to play here. In the first half, Spadafora against the man-to-man -man of William Blunt. He'll hand to Dom. Dom's going to fire away. Not this time, young fella. Board to Grady. He'll go left side to Wendell. Wendell will pick his dribble up. Reset with Robertson. Going to get a high ball screen. Robertson flips it to Caden. Caden will post up Spadafora. See where the help comes. He'll find Henson. A little base, a little 15-foot jumper. Good. Too much space for Henson. Backed well, off on him, respecting the drive, I guess. And no, they were set the, off of the help for Robertson is what it was. Yeah, that's six. And he's benefited off that. Six in a row. or six points this quarter for Lucas Henson. Aiden Van Acker, guard against Wendell. Attacks, pull-up shot, strong. Rebound, tipped out to Dabrowski. Dabrowski has it left side. Hold it up. Goes to Caden. Caden for a dagger three. In and out, rebound Grady's fouled twice. Wow. No call. And a run out dunk for but Dom. And one. Henson Why? tried to block it. Why are you fouling him? Yeah, you can't come close right there. Just let him get the two. Farragut back on top, 26-24, 130 to go in the half. Van Acker claims two free throws in a row. Robertson By the way, that was Hitson's first foul. Robertson's foul. Spadafora. His second. Team's third. Rob Grady will go to the line for two. Grady's first free throw, no good off the brick. Carball's going to check in. Is that his first action? I believe so. Yep. Kent Carball, 6'3", junior. Dallas Carball's little brother. One for two from the Remember line that? is Grady. They had a couple sisters too, didn't they? I believe so. Yeah, so 25-26 as Farragut still clings to a one-point lead. Parker Lane, stolen, but oh, it got right back in his hands for a jumper, wow. Three-point lead for Farragut, one minute to play before intermission. Robbie, Farragut, they don't let you have anything easy, do they? Nope, they just look at this it. defense, all the way extended out the timeline. 
They just Robertson shot up, shot in. 42 seconds left. And William Blunt will go half court, man to man. No, it might be 131. It is 131. Aiden finds Parker. Parker goes to the corner to Dom. Dom squares it up with Aiden. 25 ticks left. Working it outside, past the lane, left side. Might hold this for the last shot, guys. Unless they find an open look. Van Acker finds Lane. He's going to attack. He goes to Carbaugh. Carbaugh tones the corner. Inside layup for Naro, no and it's good. Two seconds, one second. Wendell from three quarter court. No good. Your score at the half. Farragut 30. William Lunt 27. Got to give Farragut credit. Three and eight, but that's not a three and eight team, really. They played a really tough schedule. We'll take a two-minute break and come back with more here from the Halftime Report at the Marvin L. Boring Gymnasium, the campus of William Blood High School. Two-minute break. All right, guys. All right, back here for the Halftime Report, brought to you by Heartland Roofing. A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau and a five-star rating on Google. Give Nate a call. 865-323-5933. Looks like Tyler's going to be in charge of the dollar, uh, $1,000 half-court shootout tonight, brought to you by Foothills Camp and Retreat Center in Chick-fil-A. As, as one of the girls has already hit, got her in Chick-fil-A. Uh, Stan, you had the first half scoring uh, there. It's brought to you by Tim Tipton, award-winning realtor and uh, realtor executives. Thank you, Robbie. And a very uh, entertaining first half that William Blunt fell behind by 11 points. They're able to get it back down to three here at the half. And the William Blunt led us scoring by Grady Robertson with 10 points. Caden Wendell has added eight points. Six points for Lucas Henson. All in the third or second quarter. Jackson Dabrowski made a bucket as well as Brett Cortez actually had one point from the line and it makes the 27 for the governors. Dominique Van Aker leads all scorers with 14 first half points, including a pair of dunks as well. Uh, also scoring for um, 
the uh, Admirals was Naro with six points. Oh, McKenna, McKenna Myers. McKenna Myers just banks one in. She'll be back for the $1,000 shootout. She ain't got prior play, obligations. Uh, Van Aker with 14, Naro with six. A Aiden Van Aker has added five. And Parker Lane has five as well to round out the Farragut scoring. Once again, your halftime score is Farragut 30, Weeble at 27. Robbie? Yeah, Stan, so uh, Van Acker got off to the hot start, the three balls. How many threes has William Blunt hit? They're averaging close to 10 a game in the season. They've got one. One three. And that was Grady early on. Oh my goodness. Cheerleader just about threw it up backwards and went in, hit the front of the rim. We've but, got to get some more rebounders down here. It's, yeah, yeah, Miss. Uh, that's the cheerleading coach, right? She's by yeah, herself. Yeah, Miss Luke. As uh, Reeves, coach, coach Reeves, Reeves comes out to help. So, yeah, there's the three balls and uh, Farragut. Stan, you said total. They had uh, four. They've hit four threes. We hit one. Yeah. So, and we're trailing by one bucket right now. So, that will do us in if we don't make no threes. We'll take another two-minute break, come back with more here from the Marvin L. Boring Gymnasium. All right, back here for the halftime show is Scott Cup out of town, Stan. He took a trip up to New York City uh, with his family. So, uh, Might Tyler, be watching tonight. He's probably watching, yeah. So Tyler's had to step in, and it's been a little bit of a struggle, as Carter said, for Tyler. Yeah, he did pretty good. He was yeah. just a little bit uncomfortable, I think, with it. Yeah, no, I'll give Tyler a hard time. Really so three minutes to go here. Farragut comes out of the, the locker room. William Blunt was out quickly. So I guess Kevin Wendell just told him, hey. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily that. We we only scored 27 points. We averaged over 70-something. So, yeah. and, and Wendell, and, Wendell probably three out of 10 or so. You know, it, that ain't going to keep lasting. You know, he shoots over 65% from the floor and 61%. He missed a couple of easy ones in there. But, Robbie, you know, we talked about it. It's Farragut's D. They do not give you easy looks. That's, you know, they've only hit one three, but how many have we took? I mean, we've not taken as many as we usually Grady's do. Grady's first one. Caden missed one. Brett missed one. Dabrowski missed one. I don't think uh, – Scarlett's got one up. Oh, yet. No, he, he missed the, he blew a layup, but other than that, and, and I mean, they really extend their man to man yeah. out past the volleyball line. So it makes it tough to really get anything going whenever they stay in front of you the whole time. It's hard to blow by them. Well, we'll see what adjustments Coach Wendell's made. Uh, so we'll try to get some score standards. You get any girl finals? I'll try uh, to pull some up. We'll look at it here. I know see. Fulton boys beat Stone Memorial bad. And Fulton will be in action tomorrow versus Maryville. Maryville's playing Catholic also tonight in boys' action. I got a GP with a big win over Oneida, the team we play Tuesday in girls and boys. Uh, GP won by 41, which GP's pretty good. 
Sevier County comes back and wins by 17 over Morristown East. And Maryville beats Fulton. Fulton moves to one and nine in yeah. girls. Eagleton Academy took it on the chin again, Robert. They lost to undefeated Sunrise 50 to 15. Woo. Some, some issues over there at the girls program, apparently. So more important things are the Govs who come in with a nine and one record and Farragut three and eight. He's, uh, like we said in the pregame, Farragut is not your normal 3-18. and 18. They played a really tough schedule. Played Fulton twice, the best team in 3A. They beat, they played them twice. That's two of their losses. Uh, played Sevier County, who's a state tournament team uh, last year. Uh, lost to them Tuesday night, so they played a really tough schedule. William Blunt's going to have to make some adjustments here. And uh, second halftime deficit of the season. We'll see how they respond. Cortez finds Grady. Grady fakes it. Now goes baseline. Pull up shot. In and out. No. Off of. Off the rim and rebounded by Farragut. That's three or four baskets, Robbie, that William Blunt's had that just rolled around or bounced around. What did Aiden have in the first half? There's a landing three. Good. No. Strong. Rebound Aiden Grady. Five points. Okay. Aiden Van Acker with five. Okay. I think he had six threes the other night. Wendell on the block, guarded by Dom. Shot up, and that was That's smooth. too easy for Wendell, yeah. The better, closer to the rim, the harder it is to defend him. Better start. Here's Spada four for three. There's a That's push. A yeah, Lanning's going to get his second if he shoved in the back. Teams first in the second half. William Blunt's basketball. And we haven't seen many of those called like, on Wendell, like when Wendell's yeah. involved this year. So I'm glad that, that was pretty that obvious that right there yeah. from behind. I don't it. know if Wendell sold it or what. I think he sold it. It didn't look super hard, but well, it's right in front of the official. Right, yeah. it's going to get called about every time. Grady, two man game with Cortez, guarded by Landing. He's going to throw it across the court, intercepted. Here comes Van Ecker ahead of the pack. Lay it up, missed it. Got his own board, though. Back to Aiden, his brother. Up top to Lanning. He That's traveled. Yep, they'll call it. So a turnover. Now they have to get him out. Parker Lane's going to have to check in. Lanning, just a sophomore. Lane, a sophomore. I don't, I don't know if Lane started all year or came off the bench. I don't know. Maybe it's just a change-up, yeah, something maybe. JP was trying or to. Or maybe he's just a, a six. Sixth man. Better off the bench guy. Inside pass to Grady. Guarded by Spadafore. Turns. Powers it up. No good. He airballed it. Here's a run out. Trevor over the lane. Lay it up. Lay it in. I thought Trevor was going to try to take a foul on Van Acker, but he did a good job of cutting him off and trying to get somebody to help. Grady's foul. Yeah, yeah. That's Naro's foul in the act of shooting. Naro's first, team second of the second half. Really nobody in foul trouble. Brett Cortez has two. Spadafora and Lanning with two each on Farragut's side. First one rolls around and out for Grady. It's his second miss from the line, I believe. Yep. One for three. One thing about a game like this, you got I mean, Farragut has played in a few of these games. Every one of their games have been like this. William Blunt's not played in a lot of tight games. Yeah, really only one. Well, there's maybe. a turnover, miscommunication. Maybe. Yep. You'll see right. that happen much with Farragut. They just turn, just actually turn it open. Yeah, over. Spadafora vacated the spot. I think it was supposed to be some pass back to him, and he just took off before he got the ball back. Farragut leads by two. William Blunt with a chance to tie or take the lead. Wendell has it. Oh, right there, yeah. Little baseline shot. And, and one. one. Good concentration there by Wendell. Good Trying to get, yeah, get the old-fashioned three-point yep. play. They're brought to you by Blunt Partnership, where careers in education come together. And William Blunt trying to retake the lead for the first time since the first quarter. And Good. 33-32, 540 remaining here in the third quarter. And just to keep a note, that's Dominique's second personal foul. Oh, nice. And one on the other end. 
Grady tried for the block. I think he bumped him on the way down. Count the bucket. Count the basket fouls on Robertson. And that's Grady's second personal foul. Team's first in the second half. And no good. Van Rolls Aker. around. Van Aker has missed three straight free throws, guys, after he taunted the crowd. Nice Strong D there. take there by Grady. Grady. And a seesaw affair, back to back to back baskets, each team. Parker Lane has it. Defensive intensity's picked up. Inside pass, Naro, back to Van Ecker. No good on the three, but a rebound by Naro. Spadafora will attack, little shot up, little shot in. By a contested Wendell. Spadafora's first basket of the night. Wendell inside to Lucas Henson. That should have been a yeah. Like he swatted at him and didn't get the call. Back and forth we go. William Blunt leads by one, 37-36. Best game since Hamilton Heights for yeah. Lucas Henson. He's got eight points. Spadafora thought about it. Kick ball there by Wendell as Dom was in the corner. Checking in is Britton Lewis here. He'll check in for Spadafora. So Farragut running about a seven-man rotation like the Govs do. Van Acker up top to his brother Dom inside the Naro. Going to call a block. And one. Oh, wow. I saw up front. I don't know what now, happened. I didn't watch either. I was watching where Cortez kind of pushed Dom. Well, he tried to cut, and he tried to. So that'll be Grady's third foul. Oh, boy. Two quick ones. Let's see if we get a replay. I didn't see it. I mean, that's hard to get out from the free throw stripe. Henson's going to fire the three from the corner. No good. Rebound lane. He's off to the races. 4.14 to go here third. Naro has it left side. Now to Dom in the corner. Reverses it. Posting up is Naro. Can they get it to him? They can't. They're going to get Henson over the back. His second, team's third. So four minutes to go. Both teams have committed three. We may get into the bonus, Robbie, in this quarter. Naro's going to attack Grady. Smart move there. Grady can't foul. Aiden to Parker. Parker lane three. Parker no good. Rebound, Robertson. William Blunt with possession with a Cortez as he brings it across the timeline. Trailing by one, 38-37 here in the third. Wendell's had five points here in the third. He's got 13 on the game. Guarded tightly. Push, that's a push. Cortez thought about it. Needs to get it back into Caden. He does. Caden pumps. He says no shot. It wasn't. I guess because he never got, got, yeah. got it up. But he was definitely go. shooting. That's the team's fourth, narrow second. So bonus for the final 3.30 anytime we get a foul. Wendell and Dominique really battling down that's there. Cool. They're going to get Aiden Van Aker, and that's going to send Brett Cortez to the line. First against Aiden. Two shots this is, coming This here is where it hurts as you get two free throws no matter what. It used yeah. to be a one and one you right. know. And most, you know, most of the time you can hit two free. Uh, Reno's stepping in. I think maybe looking for blood on he's got blood. Brady. He doesn't know where he's looking Right for above it. his knee yeah. or on the side of his knee. Dabrowski, will, and actually Max Lipinski will check in. They'll get him taped up and get him back out there. As Cortez shoots his first from the line. Short. Flat. No legs there. He need to use his legs a little bit. Now looking to tie. Legs that time, and it's good. good. Dabrowski's checking in. He'll check in for Lipinski. Or uh, excuse me, Henson. I say Lipinski just checked yeah. in. I don't even know if that, I think that you're not allowed to do that, right? What's that? You can't sub out before you play. No, who, who subbed out? Oh, there's a turnover. <laughs> yes. But Lipinski thought he was getting taken out. Oh, no, he did come out. Yeah, you can't, you can't, there's got to be timer off the clock. But right. Lewis wasn't even looking, Robbie. Right, and, and Parker it, threw the ball, yeah. 
So William Lunt in a tie game. Cortez pull up 20 footer, no good. Tipped up into the hands of Dabrowski. Pump fake, laid up, no good. Tipped up again. Cortez tipped it away and here comes Parker Lane ahead to Dom. Dom shuffled his feet, stolen by Cortez into the hands of Lipinski. He's got wind on the left side. He will, Euro, Euro. in the paint, oh. no good. Tipped up, rebound, good job there by number 11, Lewis. Need to play without fouling here. Under three minutes now in the third quarter. Lewis inside pass to Naro. Naro in the paint, shot up. Nice move, and Wendell picks up the foul. It's a really good move by Naro. Wendell's first, fourth against William Blunt, but two shots coming for Naro. Robertson set the check back in here for the Govs. We'll see who he gets. We'll get Lipinski. Naro knocks down the free toss. He'll get Cortez. Okay, Cortez still with two stands? Yes. So Naro breaks the four straight misses that Farragut had had from the stripe. More importantly for them, it gives them a one point lead. He knocks two point lead. lead. 40 to 38. 2.30 to go here in the third. Grady with it. Over to Dabrowski. Dabrowski looking in to Caden. Can't get it to him. Now he has to go to the corner. Caden thought about the three. Now he gets the switch. They step, step back three for Caden. Long. Rebound. Taken by Dom. And Dabrowski's hurt. Uh, he shakes it off. Stolen nearly by Lipinski. Into the hands of Parker. Timeout Farragut. This timeout's going to be brought to you by South Park or East Tennessee Insurance, your local independent insurance agency. We'll take a 30 second break. Third quarter, two minutes remaining, 40 to 38. Admiral's on top as this one's passed out into the backcourt. And then a foul on Scarlett. That's going to send Lewis to the line. Scarlett's first, team's fifth. So two shots coming here, Robbie, for Britton Lewis. We apologize for any problems with replays on game breaks. Um, been told that Volume is jumping up a little bit. We'll try and get that taken care of. The first free throw is knocked down by Lewis. It'll be his first point of the night. So four straight free throws. Final four is going to check in. Two for two from the line. As Farragut extends their lead to four. So Farragut has won the third quarter. Yeah, right now they lead 12 to 11, don't they? They've done a really good job of keeping Scarlett out of this game. Hasn't put up a three ball yet. Inside to Lipinski. Lipinski turns, shot up, shot in. Good. A fade away by Maximilian Lipinski. 1.30 to go here in the third. Aiden Van Ecker, now to Parker. A little two guard set up here. Pass nearly deflected by Trevor. Now they got a corner three. Nope, we're going to get it. Aiden will shoot it. Short. Rebound. Tipped up. Nice job by Naro. Seems like they get every loose ball. Pull up jumper. Good. Dominic Van Acker. 18 points on the night. 
Grady turns the corner, floater up, floater in. Under a minute remaining in the third. You got to find stops. We're starting, the scoring is starting to pick up, but we got to find some stops and rebounds. Van Acker, kick, skip pass to Parker. Back to Dom. Now to Aiden in the corner. Skip pass to Parker Lane. Thought about it. Here now it to comes. Dom. Oh. One more. Aiden, clean three, short. Rebound hit the wire. Hit the wire, yep. You said that Aiden hit six threes in a game earlier this year. Tuesday night versus Sevier County. We've kind of dodged a bullet there. I mean, he's had a lot of looks. He's got five points, but over from behind the strike. 20 seconds on the clock. No. Grady throws it away. Yeah, I tried to get um, Wendell on the flare, but just really good defense. Yeah. I mean, that's, you got to give your hat to them. Yeah. They knew they had the game plan. They know you got to stop 11 and 20 if you're playing with your blood. And they, you don't and stop four, them. And four, you don't let four shoot open three. You got to slow them. Brett picks up his third. And that's free throws. So Brett's got three. Going to back to the line is Naro, who is four of five from the stripe tonight with nine seconds to go. Two hey. guys set to, set to check in here. Looks like Carball, and I don't think we've seen the other guy yet, number 14. That's a McTavish. Junior, Carson McTavish, 6'3", Junior. Set to check, check in also is Britton Lewis. We bring Lucas in for this possession. Naro misses One out of the two. second. One. Wendell rebounds with eight. Goes left side, seven seconds. Grady has it. Five, he'll get a ball screen from Caden. Crosses over, pull it, step back, three ball. Off to the board. No good. Your score after three. It was a wash in the third, which means Farragut still leads by three. Farragut, 45. William Lutton, 42. 60-second break. Fourth quarter, quarter action, 45-42. As Admirals have kept a three-point lead for two quarters. William Lutz still in the 1-3-1 here. Foul trouble. William Lutz got two with three. Almost a fourth right there for Cortez. Inside pass. He don't have the ball. He didn't have the ball. No, he never had the ball. Not a good timeout call. They're going to give it to him, though. Well, I don't referees know. Gonna are going to confer. About it. They're going to talk about it. Yeah. They're going to give it to him. He didn't have the ball. They're giving him a – They're going to give him the timeout. It's a full timeout. This timeout brought to you by – Blevins Realty Group, making buyers and sellers happy. We'll take, uh, we'll, we'll keep it here. Um, so it uh, looks like we got the replays back up and working. So sorry about that technical difficulty where the, said the volume went up. Yeah, and Kevin Wendell's talking to Reno, Robbie, and asking him, how do you call and, time and, out and without I the ball? I kind of think the guy was on the ground with the ball, and then he threw it, and the referee just threw, called the timeout late. 
I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Well, the, the, the timeout was called from the bench. Yeah. It wasn't from the player. Right, it was from right, the bench. Yeah, JP called it. And only the assistant, I mean, only the head coach can call the timeout on the bench. Naro's going to fire a three. Looks good. Off to the left and a rebound. Goes to Wendell. Inside oh, pass to Grady. Go score. Oh, blocked from behind yeah. by Aiden. Aiden Van Acker with a great block from behind. That was pretty clean. And here comes the Admirals. Yeah, it was clean up top. Definitely clean. Naro, Liam Blunt looks like man to man. Lane has it. Left side pass going to attack is Dom. What about Trevor? Trevor nearly. He did. He knocked it off of him. Van Acker was wanting a foul. I, I probably agree with yeah. Dominic on that one. Like Trevor came across the body, but after the last timeout call, I don't know what to expect anymore. Three-point line extended. Cortez has it. Back cut. There Grady. it is. Grady will two-hand dunk it. Maybe that'll get the crowd going right there. So that'll cut the lead down to one. Under six and a half now remaining in the game. One, three, one. 17 points for Robertson. Aiden Van Acker up top of the lane. Back to Van Acker. Now Dom has it left side. Fakes a pass. Picks up his dribble. 6-11 to go. This slowed the pace way down. Shot up and in. Naro. Really strong there by Naro. Henson all in his face, and he's able to concentrate and get it down. Naro has 13 points, guys, so he has picked it up, Robbie. Wendell wanting a foul. Wasn't called. Doesn't matter. He'll get two anyway. Nah, that was, that was clean. I just got clean. That yeah, it was clean. Up. Yeah, they let him go. Got to find stops and rebounds. You're going to have to win it on this end right here. Here comes a, oh, I thought a big three, but Dominique. That's a Cortez undercut. It is. His fourth. And that's a dangerous play. It yeah. is, really. I don't think he meant any intent by it, though. He just ran He just was under. Under, out of the position. And Dabrowski will have to check in here. And Cortez will have to go to the bench. Lewis is going to check in as well. He'll check in for Spadafora. And Cortez will go to the bench. Dabrowski checks in for him. 19 points for Dominique Van Anker. Make it a nice 20. And a lead back to three. Five and a half to play. These two teams last year played the overtime on this same court. Henson has it. Three-point line extended at the top of the key. Finds Robertson. Robertson tries to turn the corner. Will lay it up. No good. Tipped up. Rebound Robertson. Going up for two. See who got the foul. It may be on Naro. If it is, it's his third. Nope. They're going to get it on Lewis. His second, team's first. Lipinski now set to check in. So Robert. You got to think Lipinski will be in there for some defensive reasons. First one good by Robertson, and Lipinski will check in for Henson. Almost everybody that's committed a foul for Farragut has two. <laughs> that's crazy. William Blunt's got two guys. One, uh, Cortez on the bench with four. Robertson on the floor with three. Two for two from the line is Grady. Lead. Cut back down to one. As William Blunt's going to stick with this one, three, one. Dom, three ball, corner, short, rebound, Wendell. Goes to Robertson. He'll have a chance to take the lead here. Crosses over. Now steps back out at the timeline. We'll bounce it a couple times. Three ball up for Grady. Strong rebound, Dabrowski. Over to Trevor. Clean look, no good. Rebound into the hands of Vanneker. Is that Scarlett's first three ball? It I is. So Vanneker attacks, kicks it to Lewis. Clean look for Aiden Vanneker. No good. Off of Fair, get out of bounds. Oh no, off William Blunt. I think, I think William Blunt may have touched. Yeah, it got poked out. 
don't believe Naro ever touched it after that. A couple so. clean looks there for the Admirals. Didn't get them to go. Trevor, can we get this one? Nope. William Blunt had a couple looks too, Robbie, though. Naro will there find Dom. You don't want that. Wide open. In and out. No good. Missed it. Rebound Grady. Grady will attack. Go to Caden. Caden will lay it up. Draw foul. The blocking foul. On Lewis. I thought the underneath referee was about to call something crazy. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> he deferred to Reno. That's Lewis's third, so they do have somebody with three fouls. Wendell will go to the line looking to tie. He does. And now maybe give William Blunt the lead. 16. Good. Make it 17 for Wendell, Wendell tonight. And that's the first lead since how long, guys? It's been a while. Yeah, all the way back to the first quarter, I yeah. believe. I think we tied it. Once Wendell third. trying to get the crowd on their feet. Four to play. Goes 50 to 49. One point lead. Lane. Thought about the three. We'll go to Aiden. Back to Parker. Back to Aiden. Working the two man. Ball deflected. Now to Dom. Dom pivots on the baseline. Can't get it to go. Goes back to his brother. Now Lane's got a clean look for three. In and out. Rebound tipped. Good forward there by Lewis. That'll leave Dom open for three. Over the back. Over the back. Van Ecker hit three threes to start this game, Stan. Yeah. He's about 0 for 4 since, maybe 0 for 5. William Blunt has a chance to extend this lead. They have a one-point lead. With Grady walks it across with 320 to, 320 to go. Go handoff here to Grady. Grady working with a crossover, spins. Good Stolen. defense by Bonaro. No, no walk. You didn't call. No walk. He never had possession. That'll leave an open three for Lane, and he okay. misses it. Throw it. Caden's got a run out. Caden will attack. Lay it up and in. That's another clean look. Parker Lane just missed it. Under three remaining. Brett Cortez set to check in here for the Govs. As the Aiden. crowd is rolling now. Aiden Banecker won't shoot it. Now goes to Dom. He thought about it. Skip it to Parker. Working it around the horn. Dom's got another look. He won't shoot it this time. Now he will shoot this one, and we are tied. 52-52. Just wide open shots. I think everybody else was scared to shoot it for them, Robbie. Yeah, you're right. 23 now for Dominic. Yep. Dabrowski has this is an extended run as we got Cortez at the table. Dabrowski gets in deep. Now to G-Rob. Two minutes to play here. He'll get the ball screen from Caden. Attacks the elbow. Shot, blocking foul. Naro. His third. Team's third. Two shots coming. Get Cortez in after this. After this Coach Wendell wants a timeout. This timeout brought to you by Circulation Station. Relieving pain with technology. Get three free treatments when you mention you listen to the voice of Champions AM 1470. We'll take a 30-second break. We're tied, 155 to go. Grady's at the line, trying to break this tie. He's got two free tosses. Nails the first. 
Spadafora will check in for Lewis. Game reset. If there is a jump ball, William Blunt will get the jump ball possession. Farragut has three team fouls. William Blunt only with one team foul here in the fourth. Two for two from the line is Robertson. William Blunt with a two-point lead. Under two remaining. Spadafora gives it at the high post to Naro. Now Aiden Banner short. Rebound's going to go to Bay. He got his own board. Dom thought about it. He'll attack the elbow. A little short jumper good. No, short. And then a foul underneath. So that'll send Naro to the line. I believe the foul is going to be on Dabrowski. Oh, yeah. His first. That's two rebounds. We're not yep. rebounding good out of the zone tonight, Stan. I think I, I don't know. I might have got out of it right there, Robbie, on that after that possession. But we'll see. Naro's been very good from the line, but not that one. They've all kind of hit the front of the rim, Stan. They've all got that roll in he's, he's, or roll off. He's got one more. That's good. pure. Timeout by the Admirals. This timeout brought to you by Bonner Burger, home of the two for $9 quarter pounders with cheese. We'll take a 30 second break. All right, back here, Cortez will trigger it in to Grady. Back to Cortez. Farragut's going to pick up full court press. He double dribbled. He did. Yeah. So a turnover. Got exactly what they wanted right there, guys. Is he didn't get? He got it. Kind of caught it on his hip. So Farragut now with a chance to take the lead. We're under a minute and a half. They'll go still 1-3-1. One, one. That's a wall, I thought. Spada four attacks. That's a tough two. Brick backside. They're going to get Robertson with his fourth. We're not rebounding out of the zone right here. I'm not sure who, who was it. Dabrowski had the inside position. He didn't box. I mean. He didn't push him back. back in yeah. Yeah. He was That's out. only, though, the third team foul, so non-shooting. More importantly, it's Grady's fourth, though. We'll go. Lane has it. Left side. Inside Brady pass. Brady can't Naro. do anything out there. Naro shot. No good. Tipped up and in. Who was that? That's from Spadafora. And Farragut leads by Warren with 50 seconds to go. Blunt with the ball. Wendell has it. Guarded by Dom. That's a foul. Hand check foul. That's number four on the team. Three on Dom. So that was, that was their one to give, Robbie. Yeah. Hey, it was way too early to get yeah. it. Yeah, with 41 seconds to go. Kevin has three timeouts left. Might have to use one right here. He does. He wants a full one. Watching the activities on the court as Caden and Dominic are discussing pleasantries and what their Christmas plans are, I'm sure. Trinity Chiropractic Timeout where you get your life forces switched on with Dr. Evan Butcher. So one foul to give for William Blunt if they were to take the lead. 
Farragut cannot foul. We're here, in the here's bonus. The thing. Yeah. So, you know, if you miss a shot here, Robbie, you got to give to that foul shot. foul immediately. Here. Yeah. And it can't be Grady. Really been a back and forth game. It's felt like Farragut has really kept the lead for the majority of this they game have. because they have, yeah. And this is one of those big games we talk about coming down the stretch for a team that defending district uh, champs. In the governors, you, got, you need to have that high seed. These games yeah, this are, district is so competitive, Robbie. You don't want to get in that 3-6 or 4-5 game. They'll get it into Wendell. Back to Cortez. Will Grady come get it? I don't know. They're mixed up. Now Grady has it. 35 seconds guarded by Spadafora. He'll use the screen from Cortez. He'll attack. That's a blocking foul. Beat Naro's fourth. So that'll send Grady to the line. 29.7. Um, Grady will have two to tie. or one to, Needs one to tie and two to take the lead. Grady on the night with 21 points. And he is six of eight from the free throw line, but he has hit his last five. We got some moisture on the court. A towel over there. Tarver's going to take care of it. So Blunt not going to put anybody under, are they? I never do. Jordan Tarver gets a round of applause. First one by Grady. Good. Tie game. Looking to take the lead now. Under 30 remaining. Just remember, you've got one foul to give, yep. so regardless here, hit or miss, you want to do that. But you don't have any rebounders, so if you miss, it's going to be their possession. And pretty much everybody but Sticks can take the foul as he misses the second free throw. These two teams went to overtime last year. Yeah, I'd say Farragut will hold it for one. William Lutz, 131. Timeout Farragut, their last timeout. It's brought to you by South Park Storage and Penske Truck Rentals at the end of William Lutz driving 411 South. We'll take a 30-second break. Knotted up, 21.3 remaining in the game. Farragut with the ball. It'll be Lane triggering it in. Throws it in the backcourt to Spadafora. 19 ticks as he walks it across. William Blood in the 1 3 1. 15 on the clock. Spadafora still dribbling. He'll attack with nine. He's got Lane. Over to Aiden. William Blood's got to extend. He traveled. Oh my lord. There's a steal. Nope. No time left, but it looked like Parker Lane traveled and didn't call it. We'll see the replay here. And I think Van Aker, Aiden Van Aker's hurt, Robbie. If he hurt his shoulder. As he was diving for that loose ball. Yeah, his time I expired. Think he, he flipped over. He flipped over Cortez. I think Brett was getting up, and they were kind of on top of each other, and they just kind of flipped over. So, so we're, going to, we're going to overtime, guys. Yeah, these two teams went to overtime last February. Uh, I don't see a replay yet. Maybe we don't have it. Um, so we'll have four free extra minutes here. And so we'll, we'll just keep it here and reset it, Robbie. Knock Naro with four fouls on the floor for Farragut. Of course, Robertson and Cortez with four each for William Blunt. And so... 55 points. They'll, they'll jump it up again. That's, 
55 points. About 20 less than our average. And you can thank Farragut's stout defense for that. They have been on the ball all night. Here's another rule that we haven't encountered yet, Stan, does the, since it's overtime. Does the fouls reset? They've got six guys on the floor. They've got six guys. Now they're bringing, they're bringing Aiden Van, Van Anker back out, Robbie, off the floor. So I don't know if that shoulder. Well, it looks like he's set to check in. Wendell tips it to uh, Trevor. Trevor will go to Grady. Grady working the baseline, little shot. Draw the foul. Lewis is fourth. I guess fouls do not reset. Well, that's shooting anyway. Yeah, but but they've not changed it on the board. Which so. you, I, I'm pretty sure I went over this that they do not. Yeah, I wouldn't think they would. No. You'd probably just play fourth quarter uh, scoring rules. I know in the NBA they do. First free toss and that's is That's the only good. place I know that does the five fouls in a quarter. As Van women, Acker will check college in. College women's do. Okay. They do that, but I don't know what the – I've never seen an overtime game. Robertson with the second toss. Good. Yeah. Two for two that time. Goes with a two-point lead. Van Aker, as you said, eight Van Aker back in the game. Lane's picked up his dribble. He's got it in the corner. 3.30 to go here in overtime. Goes by two, 57-55. William Blunt still in the 1-3-1. Skip pass to Dom. He looks in the corner, can't get it to him. Now a cutter will be Aiden, kick it out to Lane. Pull up, 18-footer. No good, rebound. Wendell lost it into the hands of Dabrowski. And guys, you feel like whoever takes a two-possession lead might win the game with how back and forth this has been. Grady's gonna step into a three. Bottom! There's your big three. Boom. Party zone three ball, they're having a party at the bar. And a five-point lead for the Govs. Inside pass to Lane. Can't do nothing with it. Goes around the horn. Spat a four out. Now out top, Aiden Van Ecker. No good. That's a push off by Naro. Naro. Attacking is a steal by Scarlett into the hands of Cortez. Five point lead in the ball for the Governors. G Rob, he might take another one. Crosses over. Guarded by Naro. No call. Here comes Naro Parker Lane. Lane. He'll lay it up and in. Nice take by Parker Lane. Naro got hit right in the mouth. Too. Yeah, when Grady continued on, he hit him in the chin with, with his right shoulder. He's, Naro's playing physical, real physical with Grady with four fouls. Wendell has it in the corner. It's going to work against Dom. Backing him down. Two minutes to play. Fade away short. short. They're going to say foot on the line, possession, Farragut. And they'll have a chance to tie. Each team has uh, gets one extra timeout, so Farragut has one timeout left. Everybody on the floor has got to be gassed. they got to dig deep. Naro kicks it to Dom. Dom will attack. Take a charge. Charge. Yep. Dabrowski gets there. That's number four on Van Ecker. That's a good call. He was set underneath. Farragut faithful, not happy with it. Now that's got to be a foul. Oh, they, they didn't call call it. Wendell, floater, strong, rebound. Grady tipped it. Not, not the shot. He, he can get that shot any time. I think he got one of the foul. Here's a steal by Cortez. Dabrowski has it, and he's fouled. Aiden Van Acker, his second. So Cortez will go to the line for Dabrowski. Lane, I mean, Lane just made that shot, and they call a technical tag. foul. They just called a technical on number one, Naro. They said whoever it was, it was their second team foul, or their second foul. Yeah, that's Naro. He's out. That's yep. a tech. That's his fifth. Oh, okay. It so it's going to be two free throws for Dabrowski. Then it'll be two free throws for Caden and the ball. So Naro's going to foul out. With They've already got the sub in, Reno. 14 points. 
What's he doing? They've got him in. They're on the court. They got it figured out. 15, Carball is the sub. So here comes the two free throws, right? Two the, free throws the, for the Dabrowski foul. off the, the steal. And then Caden will get two for the Tech, and we'll get the ball side out. First one good. Big as it makes it a two-possession game. Three points on the night for Dabrowski. Good. Those are two big ones. And now Caden will come and shoot two more. Did you all see what the foul, the technical's for? I was I think assuming Mauro was, said something to, yeah. to the ref. That's the only thing I saw. Caden nails the first. Who was the regular foul on? Did you get that? Statement? It was on Aiden Van Aker. His okay, second. yeah, you're right. You're right. And two for two. Four, four. That's so far a four-point possession. And we have let's lead up to seven with a minute 24 to go and possession. Wendell's getting hooked. They called it. That's yeah. his fifth. That's Dominic's fifth foul. Yeah, he was being wrapped up. He's not happy with the call, but it is the right call. He's going to foul out with 23 points on the night. Yeah, excellent game for Dominic Van Aker. As he kept the Admirals in this game with the lead for the majority of it. So Navarro and Van Aker... Dominic Van Aker have been disqualified. After having a bunch of guys with two fouls and nobody really in foul trouble. So there's only four guys for Farragut on the floor. JP has 30 seconds. I thought well, that, was, that was more than 30. They got to get somebody on the floor. Lewis is going to come in. Well... The other officials should, they did the right thing, but you still hate that because the other officials should never give Caden the ball. Well, he also knew that 30 seconds was up. He just assumed yeah, that. Yeah, but. I know you're right. Good from Wendell. He'll have another. He'll extend the lead to nine. Or excuse me, not nine. Yeah, nine. nine. <laughs> Do your math. Nine. Nope. He can't hate it though. It's eight. I'm not a math major. <laughs> 120 to go. Here is Spadafora. William Lutz still has that foul to give. Clean look for Lewis. Good. Good. Timeout. Farragut. 114 to go. They'll use their one timeout they get. It's brought to you by East Tennessee Insurers, your local independent insurance agency. We'll take a 30 second break. Back here, William Blunt. Cortez will get it into Wendell. They're going to call a foul on Lewis. Guess what? That's number five for him, too. It's Lewis is disqualified. Well, they ain't said nothing yet. So they're going to have to end up bringing in somebody who hasn't. Now they buzz the horn. So they're going to bring so, in Lanning. I don't know if y'all just saw what happened. Reno went up to Caden and said, don't throw no uh, elbows because the, re the fans are on Reno thinking that there. And Caden just kind of shook his head. He's like, the guy's bear hugging me. 
Free throw good for Caden. He's probably getting close to his average now. Yeah, I'll get that total in just a second for you, Robbie. And it's felt like a really quiet night for him. Uh, it's not. It's definitely not his best game of the year. No. 23. Here's a Parker Lane layup. And one. Wow. Yeah. Wow. At that point, just let him go. They're going to call this one on Wendell. I think he put it, his left hand on his hip. And now they get to stop the clock. They got a chance to make it a one-possession game. They've got that with his. Oh, that's a violation. That... That's a violation. Yep. It's a violation. The guy came in, so it is. No shot. They were about to let him shoot. Yeah, I know it. So the foul, which never really occurred. That's got to be a foul. They'll call that. I'm just playing the foul game here. Carball gets the foul. We're still over a minute in the, in the game, sure. guys. Carball. His first. Why he, went, why he walked into the lane like that. Yeah. 103 to go, so. Grady back to the line. He's lived there tonight. Nails the first. Now William Blunt will bring two guys in. Two for two. And we'll go two, two, one, three-quarter court. Actually, just a little sloughing man, full court. Parker Lane pull up 18-footer, good. That's a tough two. Tell you what, he's got six of their nine points, Robbie, in the OT. Wendell's getting fouled. Grady. Grady's getting fouled. Well, they, they know they're fouling. I yeah, don't know they're trying they're... to foul. Right. They're just hoping the refs don't call it. So that goes against Lanning, his third. Grady back to the line to miss. Short on that one. First miss here in overtime for him. Oh. One for two this time. 69-64 the new lead. 45 seconds remaining. Uh, Got to get a stop and a rebound. Landing has it over to Carball. Now to Parker. He attacks. Tough two up. Tough two in. Wow. Okay. Eight points here in the overtime for Parker Lane. Nice. Wendell has it. Skips it over to Grady. 25 ticks. Grady will find Caden. He'll get fouled. With 21 and a half. This is going to be on Lane. His first. Every one of these district games are going to go like this. I yep. bet. You're right, guys. This district is so balanced. First one by Wendell is good. Just over 20 seconds remaining here. That, most importantly, makes it two possessions. Good. I think one more. We'll queue up the Heartland Roofing. Van Ecker way off to the right. Rebound tipped out into the Parker Lane. Step back three. Short. Rebound G-Rob. Eight seconds. Adios. And he'll get it across. Over to Dabrowski. Start Your the final. bus. Your final score in overtime. William Lutz, 71. Farragut, 66. I don't think that last dunk counted. No, it no. did not. Okay. All right. So, yeah, there's your final. We'll take a couple-minute break and come back with the conclusion of the halftime report or the post-game report.
Back here at the victorious campus of William Blood High School as the Govs win 71-66 in overtime over the Admirals. And this is the Heartland Roofing post-game report. Thank you to Nate and all you do for William Blood Athletics and the Gov Nation Network. Stan, you have Tim Tipton's stats with Stan tonight. Thank you, Robbie. Yes, give Tim a call for all your realty needs as Grady Robertson led all scores with 30 points tonight, guys. He ended up with six points in the fourth, or excuse me, in the overtime. Caden uh, Wendell added 25 for the governor, so um, he ended up with six points as well. As William Blunt had, excuse me, Grady had eight in overtime. Kevin, or Caden had six. That was 14 of William Blunt's 16 in overtime right there. So 30 and 25 apiece. Lucas Henson added eight points tonight as he's going to be our player of the game and step in here in just a second. Jackson Dabrowski with four points. Brent Cortez with two points. And Max Lipinski with two points as well to round out to 71 for the Governors. Over on the Farragut side, Dominique Van Aker with 23 points on the night before fouling out. Berkeley uh, Naro with also double figures with 14 points before fouling out. Parker Lane had 15 points, Robbie. He had seven when the overtime started. Wow. And ended with 15 on the night. Of course, who else were they going to after Van Aker and yeah. Naro were out? Uh, and I think the, uh, young, the other Van Aker might be a little bit he hurt, hurt in yeah. the fourth quarter. So Parker Lane really stepped it up, the sophomore. Britton Lewis added five points. Aiden Van Aker had five points. And Spot of Spotifora Fora had four points to round out the Admiral scoring. Once again, William Blunt wins this one in overtime, 71 to 66. They outscored the Admirals 17 to 12 in period, the extra period. Number five. All right, Murphy Bobcat wants to reward a player of the game with the extra effort plays, showing a difference in a good player and a great player. And tonight, that's Lucas Henson. Lucas, thanks for joining us up top here in the booth. Uh, Talk about that game right there. We haven't had a lot of close games this year. Talk about what your team learned tonight about yourself. Hold on, we got to turn you, no, you off. There, there we go. There you go. Good. Yeah, right. you're good. Yeah. yeah, that was a that was a great game. It was definitely a battle. Um, in practice, coach just stresses, hey, when it gets down to the wire, we just got to want it more and more. And that was us tonight. We just wanted it, and we fought to the end. You got the second halftime deficit of the year. You guys go into halftime down by three. It was a quick halftime speech. What did Coach say to you? Uh, he just told us we're doing good, doing good. This is what we want. This is the kind of game we play for. Um, it's a good team. And it's going to be like that it, uh, every game in the district. We talk about one through six is going to be tight every night. Yeah. You kind of got to hold serve. I tell you what, Lucas, I thought in the second quarter we – Farragut was able to build an 11-point lead at one point in the second quarter, and uh, we were getting frustrated, and they were really helping off, and you made them pay. You had six quick points, three two-point baskets in there in the in the second quarter there that, that really kept us. Talk about that. Did you notice that your man was slumping on the help? Or? Uh, yeah, he was just giving me a little too much space. Um, Saw it just flash into the open spot. My teammates were able to hit me. So yeah. Great yeah, those, those are probably the six biggest points, yeah. you know, of the night. Because at that point, the game could go any which way. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, of course, you ended up with eight points tonight. So, good good night for you. Needed all eight of those. We only won by five there. So, great job tonight. And that's why you're our Murphy Thanks. Bobcat player of the game. Next Very week, Lucas. It. Next week, you got a tournament at Anderson County. And, and then after that, you'll have a uh, quick break for Christmas and then off to Florida. Uh, got Christmas plans before after the tournament next week? Uh, just staying home, hanging out with my family. Uh, pretty right. much just hang out. That's what you should do on Christmas. All right. Merry Christmas to the Hensons. All yep. right. Thank you for that. Thank you we'll, for we'll, we'll, we'll let Jordan take over from Coach there. Coach Conley right there. Coach Conley stepping in here now after a very exciting game. I tell you what, overtime game. Had an overtime game last year with Farragut, I believe, here, didn't yep. we? And so I t Robbie made this on the air. And uh, unfortunately, um, all these district games are going to be like this, aren't they? Because this district is so balanced. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're just so tight. Not a lot of different separation. But talk about you guys tonight, the win. 
Um, we knew the first half that we, we we took a lot of their best looks. They hit a lot of shots early, so we kind of came out of the halftime thinking if we just play to our standard, let the game go, um, it'll fall on our lap the way we wanted it to. Um, naturally, uh, they're a really good. They're a really good team. They're well coached. They play very, very, very good and quick physical defense, and they take you out of a lot of looks that we normally exactly. get. So um, we had to find ways to get looks that we don't normally get. Uh, and it's, I'll be honest, going against the zone a couple of games, you know, it complete different offense compared to what we had to run tonight. So I'm proud of our guys just battling through and playing together and getting one. Yeah, the slow start, uh, Caden didn't have his best uh, effort. Experience. I think he might have been about three for ten in the first half. Uh, what's, what's something you say to a player like Caden Wendell? Um, just two claps and a snap is what we've been focusing on the last two days is just moving on to the next play no matter what it is. Um, and he, good shooters are going to shoot and percentages are going to happen. There's a reason he's a high percentage shooter. So if you're shooting low percentage um, in the first quarter, first half, you just keep going and eventually it'll come fall your way, and it did. Yeah, that's what uh, happened. And same thing for them. Uh, I felt like they hit all their shots early, so we started playing very aggressive uh, in the passing lanes in our 1-3-1 one, one and forcing a lot of looks, and they missed a lot in the, third, in the second half, yeah. and that's the difference in the game for us. Yeah, uh, the first quarter, uh, Dominique Van Aker hit three threes, you know, there early on, mm -hmm. Coach, and then he only hit one three the rest of the game. Yeah, and, it was a and, big one. It made it 52-52. Yeah. But, but uh, if we rebound a little bit better off those misses. Yeah, uh, that's, yeah, that's what I was going to – was, that was my next point is that <laughs> tonight we did not rebound well at all no. out of that 1-3-1. One, one. No, and I credit to uh, Farragut's guys for just understanding positioning. And the, the number one out there is a very physical, great rebounder. Um, he beat us in position every single time, so he was able to get a lot of ones that we are used to getting. Um, but, again, I can't blame our guys that – yeah. I know, one and I know probably tired, yeah. One and oh, and that's a uh, coach. You went two and oh this week as you stepped up uh, the last two games for Coach Wendell. Let's talk about next week. You got Anderson County tournament team uh, tournament you won last year. They're actually they're a good team, man. Yeah, they're going to play us really hard, and we've got to come out ready to play. That's our first round matchup. Uh, if we win or lose, we play the winner or loser of Campbell County or Carter. So that would be our semifinal matchup. Uh, on our side of the bracket. And then after Christmas, we leave the day after Christmas, as usual, to Destin, Florida, where we play in the Hilton San Destin. Um, and we play Lakeshore, Louisiana, first game uh, on the 27th. We played them last year. They're a good team. And we're, they're going to play us hard again, and it's going to be a tough one. They've got it split up now, and that tournament is a small school and large school. So now we've, we've got a lot of good teams in our, in our bracket. So we're excited. Uh, second round game, if we win that first one, we either get Nolensville, or Mortimer Jordan from Alabama, who is – both of them are very good. Yeah. So I it's going to be a great Are they both still undefeated? Uh, I, I'm not sure. Last time I looked, they were. Okay. Both so. of them were pretty close. So. All right, Jordan, thank you for your time up here, and congratulations. 1-0 in the district and holding serve here as the Govs with a 71-66 win against Farragut. And we'll see you guys on January 3rd will be our next broadcast as the Fulton – Falcons will come to the Marv. Thanks for watching and God bless.